Yeah, buddies, it's the Bennington Show. Monday. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I'm Ron Bennington. Hmm. Um, big, big Monday planned here today. We've got uh, two thirds of the skanks coming up at two o'clock today. I guess we'll be talking a little skank fest. Nice. Yeah. Since uh, they uh, mentioned that, but. Uh, the news what? is out. <laughs> huh? The news is out. I'm the sorry. news is out. Ari Shafir has already made the big announcement. Um, and then we have Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith. They also got some gigs in Boston coming out. Bill Hader, uh, who was on SNL, is supposed to be stopping in cool. today. His new show, Barry, is coming out on what network, Chris? HBO. HBO. The old home box office. <laughs> it's like a box office, but at home for you. You know, I didn't even bring this up to you uh, guys, but um, the third and missing skank, mm-hmm. uh, the incredibly always busy Big J Okerson, uh, he gave me Michael Che's ticket to uh, the next game the other night. Which are the Lorne Michael seats. That's so crazy. Oh, Did you guys have fun? We had an unbelievable blast. But you get like the full food, yeah. beverage, uh, service. and um, Is this like a private section? Like you're No, it's just on down the- you know, on the floor. I'm not, uh, you know, it's uh, right behind Celebrity Row. So we watched it with uh, Call Me By Your Name Kid. Oh, nice. Timothy, I'm going to guess Shalimar. That's pretty close, I close think. Close enough. And Baby Driver was there. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Those are two hot young stars right now. They are. <laughs> um, and I was sitting next to the red hot Mike Fenoya. Nice. Let me tell you just uh, what a good guy Mike Fenoya is. So they came over and they were throwing um, shirts up, right? So there's this shirt coming right towards Mike Fenoya, but it's aiming for the young girl who's sitting next to him. And Mike leans forward, puts his chest up. It looked like he was going to have a perfect pick six, but he allowed that he pulled himself back yeah. and let the youngster catch it. That's very sweet. That's a classy guy. Big J uh, caught a uh, shirt, gave it to Christine, which was very, very sweet. And then when he saw Pete Davidson, he took that shirt and gave it to Pete. Oh, no. <laughs> no, this is the best part of it. We're leaving. And <laughs> under Pete Davidson's fucking seat was the shirt. The Pete had already left and left his shirt under it. And Christine goes like this. Jay, can I get my shirt back? <laughs> It's very funny how you're able to sit and enjoy wedding family, like wedding reception food is what it is, no matter where you go. Yes. But if it's brought to you and really what it it has to feel like is I'm getting better than someone else. Suddenly you're like, this is a classy situation. Even if we were acting like it was classy. (laughs) Even if you're eating potato skins, you're still going like very nice. First of all, I would have killed for a potato skin. (laughs) You know, they had to. Shrimp as big as your fist, and that's too big for shrimp, if we're going to be totally honest. Yeah. Like a neither a little slow, a smaller taste to your shrimp. I don't shrimp. like a meaty shrimp. Like, Mm-mm. I don't feel like I want to feel the texture of, like, a steak as I bite into it. This is the uh, other funny thing is, like, I don't even know these comics, but they're old school New York comics, and they were in the section. And the guy was trying to talk Pete into working some of his gigs. <laughs> and they took place at a firehouse. Nice. Well, did Pete like the idea of it? or? No, I meant Mike, oh. not Pete. That would have been insane. <laughs> I would have been insane if it was Pete. <laughs> no, Mike is like, you know, I'm uh, on the road a lot with the Jokers right now. <laughs> Who? <laughs> so I'm telling you, you got everything. It's a beautiful firehouse. You go in. You do 25 minutes. Mike Noy and Jay are uh, really good buddies. They really do well, run together. Well, they used together. to be uh, yeah. roommates. They were uh, lovable roommates. And uh, I don't know, you know, I think that if... 
Well, Jay's got a lot of best friends. Yeah. You know? Like everybody that you meet, it seems like they assume that they're Jay's best friend. Oh, I definitely felt that way. Like, as I got to know Jay, I'm like, I guess I'm really close friends with Jay now. This is great. People got mad at him when he did the unmask with me for saying that he was the center web yes. of all the New York friendships. And literally, uh, a couple guys came over to me after, and they were like, uh, like, Jay put one over on you, dude. You know what I mean? Because he's not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like me and Lewis knew each other before either one of us knew Jay. And I'm like, I think that you have focused on a part of the unmasked that doesn't matter at all. Uh, Vito did the uh, unmasked because uh, he did the warm up because uh-huh. you had an appointment today. And I'm going to give him a special favor and not mention anything about it. The warm up stops 17 minutes before we got there. Oh, no, that's not. That's the not crowd how one warms up. Not only that, I gave him the signal of warm them up. Yeah, as I was with the guys because we were getting picture taken, and Vita waved at me. I miss. I misread the situation. I thought you were looking for a thumbs up, and I completely fucked up on my end. The thumbs up would be because the crowd was warmed up and applauding and ready for the guys. Not that you had. I'm. I'm sure you did something long before, but it's supposed to go right up to that moment. You've yeah. seen these things done before did you uh, enjoy the guys yeah i mean they were great they were happy to be there they sure were happy to be there so uh that's all coming out when that's friday this friday oh this friday this friday two o'clock what what what's the date on this friday that like, is march 23rd or something 23rd yes march 23rd then warm up let's get some warmth but those guys were exactly what i expected they were their characters from the show yeah that's who they are yeah they literally are that you got the sweet guy the outgoing guy the bro guy yeah the late well he <laughs> see his thing was because i brought up the patrice blowout, yeah. and he's like you know i'm gonna get called a hipster and then a bro which am i a hipster or a bro um but they were like exact that whole thing went exactly and that rarely happens Normally somebody surprises you. Yeah. But I think they were so young when they did that, that they just put their pure personalities out there. Right. I mean, like, well, you know, a lot of times with young people, that's what someone buys into, right? Like you're going, we love you. We need a show with you. You know what I mean? Right. Like that. But I, mean, but I guess they had nothing else to write but themselves. That's, right. that's what they brought to the table. And they've had a, just a ton of success. And in this, uh, Adam Devine shows his dick. So, I mean, what more do you want, folks? Perfect. It's all out there for you. What's the name of the film? Game Over Man. Game Over Man. It's over, man. And then uh, we, uh, I think that the most exciting part of this, I'm, is this running Friday? This is running Friday at 2 p.m. So, uh we're also at the end of it do a, a gender reveal. So when Great. I cut into the cake, you'll see if it's pink or blue. <laughs> Those have gotten so out of control. I saw a thing recently where they were just showing even just like the cakes and the different things they say, like, is it going to be tiaras or guns? Like, like what? they'll like pick like random boy and girl. Just things. stereotyping like, that much. Yeah. Like I've never met a small child <laughs> like, with a tiara what? on. <laughs> like what? So this the, is the, the problem you have to go through with people, right? You have, they want to make the marriage proposal, you know, yes. and, and then you have the pre wedding parties. It used to be just a bachelor party and then the girls started bachelorette parties but a bachelorette party was like you know what maybe we should do something too sure. you know what i mean and the bachelor party people don't realize this it's just the way those guys act it right up until the wedding yeah you just called one the bachelor party but it wasn't that different than any other night getting hammered and it also is particularly strange when you're talking about in a uh, modern day age you're talking about people who have been together for a very long time oh, in mean some that cases. they've already been living yes. together yeah. and they've already been uh exclusive with each other for many years it's like hey man this is your last night to get out and 
fuck someone. And it's yeah. like, I haven't been able to do that for a long time. Well, that's the thing is, like, these guys, you know, you used to marry a virgin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who's nervous uh, about anything? Yeah. Anymore. I had uh, a friend of mine had showed me his grandparents wedding picture. Yeah. And there is a picture of them and they're in the in the bedroom with their heads sticking out and they're each holding their shoes and looking all scared. And we're just like, this is not like even that as a stereotype or as a joke is not something that exists anymore. And the idea is here's two virgins off to have sex for the first time. Let's snap a quick pic. <laughs> Did you ever hear the thing like with Native Americans that they would? throw they would like bang on this fucking deer rug or something right and then they would throw it out to the tribe to prove that it had blood on it yes i have heard you that just like that's as personal as you can get although i will tell you when i was first when i was first told about it someone had confused it and they told me that's what italians do and i was very i was like i don't think they do that that's because italians <laughs> played uh, native americans in all the early <laughs> <laughs> that could be where the confusion was but yeah all this stuff has gotten look people have their own little traditions and things they want to do but the fact that now there's this pressure that you have to film them or do like they, those things have to go viral like i was at a first birthday this weekend and everyone's like you got you're doing the cake smash right you guys are doing a cake smash. What? So this is like a new tradition. And that's on the on the kid's first birthday. You get instead of just giving them a little piece of cake, you bake them like a mini cake. And then you film the baby and the baby smashes into the cake and smashes it all over their face. So and it's a cake smash. Here's the thing. <laughs> we don't need the baby to act like a baby. It's just a baby. You know what I mean? Like, give me some more. Right. The whole thing used to be a baby as a baby. And that's funny enough. And then the idea is also like to dress them up nice. So like they ruin their clothes and they get the cake in their hair. But like the fact that it's a turn. Like if somebody said, oh, this is what we're doing. We think it'll be funny to watch the baby just like destroy yeah. a cake. But it's just like everyone lets the baby destroy a cake now. You yeah. don't want to be the one family who doesn't do a cake smash. We always gave a knife to a baby and let him cut the cake. <laughs> and like, even like it was like my third or fourth <laughs> birthday, you see me just swinging around a big <laughs> fucking butcher knife and the adults trying to take no, it away from me. It's your idea. And then like, when we would watch those home movies later, people in my family like, Look at you. You don't have to use a knife. Like I was a baby. Why would you hand a big <laughs> knife to anything. a baby? I could have put up my cousin's eye. <laughs> Do you see another bomb in Austin? I did not see yeah, that another one went off. Bomb, and they say there's, it seems like it's the same guy. It's a similar. I'm like, of course it's the same guy. They think how there's many, a connection. How many people know how to make bombs? And this one had a trip wire. Really? And is this the same, it's like the same type of targets? Is it similar across the board? Somebody told me today that it seems like it's directed at African Americans. And I know yeah. the Roots had to pull out of a show because there was bomb threats or something like that. But I don't know that for a fact. I yeah. don't, you know, I don't know whether that's uh, done that way on purpose. But this dude, whoever he is, and I'm going to assume a dude, because women aren't known for making trip wires. <laughs> But even knowing that the police are looking for him and all the fucking cameras we have out there nowadays, he's still doing it. Yeah. Like normally you would think, oh, fuck, the, the, every cop in the state is looking for me. I better lay low or get out of here. No, he's putting together a tripwire like this is a movie. Well, that's the thing. Like even remember how crazy that was with the D.C. sniper. And that was way before a oh, lot yeah. of the technology. And we were like, how are they not catching this person? It doesn't make sense in a well, modern day age. And so th that makes this even weirder when you well, have somebody who's like repeat offender doing something like that. Yeah, you don't catch him because he's probably a weirdo loner. And, you know, he's there's a ramness to this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like you're hitting banks. You know, you're just like, I don't care who I do this to. Uh, here's our friend Jill. What's up, Jill? Hey, guys. Uh, I wanted to say, did you know that that baby driver and Timothy Chalamet went to LaGuardia High together? Oh, I had no idea. So here that. they are. Uh, two kids who went to the fame school 
They're gonna live forever. <laughs> one of them's gay, one of them drives fame. <laughs> um, I did feel bad about this, and maybe it was because it was the fucking garden, but um, Baby Driver got a much bigger applause pop. Oh, really? I know, I know he's like a really big Knicks fan. I think he goes to most of the game. Oh, is that right? So, yeah, so maybe that's why. But was his girlfriend there? Ansel? No, it was just oh. uh, it was a dude night. They were, they were actually sitting next to Chris Rock, and all I could see was free tickets. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, if you want a free ticket, you got to sit up and let everybody applaud for you. Um, but Vito, I was happy to see this. Fucking the Eagles chant going time and time again and the new yorkers just taking it like a chode to the throat i was watching that game on tv and the eagles uh the philly fans took over the garden there were no knicks chants at all the eagles chant was insane we got nothing to chant about right now if you're a knicks fan i mean they uh they gave it away yeah and a lot of people think the knicks are tanking like tonight is the tank bowl it's versus chicago for eighth place but there's not a lot to root for right now with the Knicks. I don't know. And I like the I like the Seventy Sixers team a lot more right now. Like Ben Simmons is amazing. Joel Embiid is something fun to well, watch. What do you do? You turn around, and switch teams? No, no. I just really like those guys on that team. How could you like the team that is a rival to you? He was a Golden State Warriors fan last year. Right? No, I, my, I like fucking Draymond Green, Chris. What basketball You're do you watch? What York. baseball do you watch? What I'm do you... a Knicks fan from way back. Larry Johnson. LJ was the man. <laughs> that was something. We had something. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I like watching certain players. That's I, The last I... time he watched a, a, a Giants game, Y.A. Tittle was playing. <laughs> <laughs> but I would I don't fucking turn around and start cheering for a, a team that you know comes to town that much. I just I really like specific play like there's something about watching players in basketball where you can watch it it's a lot more independent than other sports can be. You can watch one guy have an amazing game on a shitty team. Yeah, there, there, there is truth to that. I'm baseball to me. You can watch a guy who's, you know, he's on a terrible team, but he's going to win the batting fucking yeah. title. Um, but, all right, Vito, let me ask you this. So, this surprise. So, the, the Knicks little dancing girls come out. And, by the way, the coach is hotter than any of the day. The coach has an ass like <laughs> that should be a, that That fucking ass should get a three-picture deal. <laughs> And she was wearing loose pants, but she was amazing. <laughs> so they come out, and the dancing girls are dressed like Tron. What? So I'm already happy, right? The opening. So then there's these lights. Now, you've seen this. They do it yeah. all the time. So I'm like, where, I'm looking around. I'm like, where are those fucking lights coming from? And the lights are spinning all over the fucking place at the same time. And then each light comes down slowly, and the girl catches it, and it ends. These are like little drone lights, Holy right? shit. Now, here's what I didn't understand. If anybody knows, what are these drones? Are all from one computer? I, I don't know because you I've couldn't seen... do this. You couldn't have everybody running a drone. Well, that's what I was thinking. They would have crashed. Like what? Like in my mind, you're describing that. I'm thinking, what do you have? Like ten guys sitting there, each controlling one singular drone. It couldn't happen. It... The way this happened and the way they pulled it together, that it could only be programmed from one place. Were they moving in unison? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, it's spectacular. I'm not going to fucking lie to you. It was better than anything I saw in the game. And it was a triple-double that night. And I still went home like, man, those fucking drone lights were pretty cool. Yeah, I was amazed by it when I saw it a few weeks ago. But they do that every game, so I'm pretty sure it's just a programmed system because they all come out of the same case. And I everything. didn't see any of that. I just saw lights. So I thought that they were lowered. I'm not really paying attention. And then it was like, fuck, that's really beautiful. And I'm like, yeah, it's beautiful, but how's it happening? <laughs> How could they be fucking twirling and not smashing into each other? And then how is it then, even if it is programmed, how is it like perfectly precise and then it drops into I mean, their right hand? down, then the, each girl puts her hand out yeah. and it falls in. Well, when they wheel them out, they place them on the floor around them. So I think from there, it's just all a program. And no, then there's, no, there, there's no other way that it could be yeah. if it wasn't off of one programming thing. But I, like, everybody's like, oh, my God. 
And I'm like, I'm just glad that you're saying this too. Because <laughs> it literally felt like a flashback. Are the cheerleaders controlling it? Is that possible? Chris, no. They're the dancing cheerleaders around. can control nothing but their own dance. They have steps. little remote <laughs> controls as they're dancing. <laughs> Same fucking thing. There's not a second that they don't fill that fucking place with noise. Really? And yeah, it's like Chuck E. Cheese. You know <laughs> what I mean? God forbid you should sit there and discuss the game <laughs> with your friends and enjoy basketball. Did you like the Gatling gun t-shirt? It was fucking nuts. It doesn't even shoot that far. Yeah, it wasn't impressive, but them wheeling out this gigantic t-shirt cannon that does rapid fire. They try fire. to have a cannon that looks like it's in that Fucking sick ass movie. Um, what were those uh, Australian movies? The Mad fuck- Max. Yeah, it was like a Mad Max fucking scene shows up. <laughs> I was, I had had it by that point. I just wanted a Walk couple of moments of peace. <laughs> I went back and what? got myself some free licorice and cracker jacks. Oh, uh, Bill Hader's ready to come in now. You guys aren't in contact. Uh, we are, but uh, then I was told on time and now early. Barry premieres this Sunday, March 25th, on HBO. Bill Hader, you saw him over the weekend, crush it on SNL, and now his new uh, TV show, Barry, on HBO. Let's bring him in. Bill Hader, back here with us. The very strange show, Barry, Uh (laughs) starts uh, uh, Sunday night, March 25th, on HBO. And I I was uh, wondering... You know, you're walking a razor with this show premise, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's dark comedy, but where this goes, yeah, no, it's 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 less. Uh, yeah, if you go into, it's better if you go into it with no expectations, because I feel like uh, people hear my name and Alex's name, Alec Berg, who I did the show with, and they go, "Oh, this is going to be very funny," or it's going to be kind of a what people think of as a TV comedy, what it looks like and feels like. And it's not, it's, no. it's much more, uh, you know, this guy is a hit man. I play a hit man. And, um, our inspiration came more from things like, um, you know, taxi driver or unforgiven. If one of those guys found salvation and with the, People from Waiting for Guffman, <laughs> you know, it's like they went into Waiting for Guffman. William Money went in for Waiting for Guffman. Went, oh yeah, this is how I can live yeah. Yeah. and and feel again. Yeah, you know, and uh, and so yeah, that that's where it came from. But we didn't, you know, because we started with the idea, and we okay, so it's about a hitman who is sad and despondent, former Marine goes and meets this acting class and just and he and he realizes oh this is why I need in my life to kind of access emotion and I want a community and I'm lonely and all this. Um you know, there was the version of the show that was kind of glib and silly. Mm-hmm. And we thought, no, that's actually very sad, uh what he does and it's brutal and terrible. So that should just be played for what it is. And I remember in the writer's room, the writer's going, what is the tone of this show? And, and I said, well, I I thought of it as kind of like, a, you know, something you would read about in Vanity Fair, you know, uh-huh. like a true crime thing like this. What if this actually happened? This guy who killed people and he used an acting class to, as a kind of a therapy in a way of, of um, getting in touch with himself. Yeah, I was uh, very surprised even knowing the premise because you assume when you hear something like it's a comedy, but there's a hitman in it, mm-hmm. you assume that you're going to get a very glib tone. That's what I yeah, thought. So right. I was surprised how how uh, much you allow the dark moments to be dark and yeah, the sad they, moments they to be to, really yeah, sad. Yeah, they have yeah. to be. Yeah, that's the reality of it. Yeah. But he is a victim himself of everything that happened to him. So, yeah. you know, you really feel for the guy. But he's also doing these things. He's, yeah, that's the whole thing. Am I a good guy or a bad guy? And the and the he says that a lot. You know, I'm only killing bad people, right? And and you know, in the second episode, this guy that he's responsible for his death, he's he's the guy's dad, and the guy's dad is just uh, crushed and is never going to be the same again. And he goes, "Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Oh gosh, I didn't. You know, it's kind of the I like taking kind of the 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 things that we see in movies and you know I watch a lot of movies and TV and stuff and the kind of 
you know, you, you see that in a lot of stuff where, you know, someone, you know, there's an action scene and, you know, three innocent people get shot, you know, yeah. in the middle of an action scene and they just keep moving yeah. and they go, oh, but those are three people now that they're, everyone, they're friends. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's terrible. <laughs> and uh, so it was kind of, it's what I liked about Unforgiven, actually, was, you know, uh, seeing that movie and kind of the meta-ness of that. Of yeah. Kind of going like, oh, you think this is so cool? No, it actually destroys you and makes you a, a monster. It changes you forever. Changes you forever, yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting, too, because you think anybody who does something that you may perceive as evil thinks that they are punishing bad guys. Anybody mm-hmm. yes, who does that's that. Right. Yeah, well, I, I punish bad guys. That's the thing that yeah. he's been telling himself and that, you know, people keep saying, no, you're a good guy. Mm-hmm. To him. No, no, but you're a good guy. It's the thing we consciously were trying to hit this idea of good guys, bad guys. It's all bullshit. You know, it's all just it's all the. It's all it's you're all just humans, you know, mm-hmm. right? Everybody is it's always uh, great in those reality shows when you see that the evil player has people who love them and who's yeah. missed them. like the end of the survivor. The guy's family's yeah. there yeah, going, yeah, 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 come yeah. on home and we'll and we'll work this out. Um, but the depressing part of it, I'm going to guess that's something that you know how to access somebody in depression. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I. To me, it was more of a accessing someone that is kind of or whatever, just playing a guy that that uh that just is a, a bit of a new soul and just kind of is lonely and doesn't have a community and you know there was so many ways are we playing him like a robot? Is he like an alien? Is he like what is this? And kind of knowing where we wanted the show, whole show, not just the season, but the show in general. Alec and I knew where we wanted it to go from the get go. It's like baby steps of getting him there, you know? Yeah. And and so let's start him here in this kind of uh, quiet, kind of depressed guy um, and doesn't know how to uh, express himself, you know? Yeah. I think we've all had a dead-end job that kind of makes us sleepwalkers for a while, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. You know, so you could always look back on a couple years of your life and go, what was I do? I thought that this was temporary, that I was there but it lasted three years oh, i, I did know? that you know when i moved out to la i was a pa and i went okay i'll do this just just to get the experience but you know i gotta be making movies and i gotta be writing and i gotta be doing you know making short films and being creative and then i was a pa and an assistant editor for six years and then you go wait a minute i'm not doing anything creative i haven't done anything that i set out to do you right know? um and uh, you have to kind of the thing about Barry, too, is that the, this fear of the thing that I'm good at is destroying me and destroying other people. Right. It's like if the Grim Reaper was kind of felt bad and had a bit of a conscious, you know, and, yeah. and just going, oh, I can't believe that this is what I was put on this earth for. And then the thing I want to do is act, which I'm terrible at. <laughs> yeah. Do you just say hell with it i'm just gonna do the thing i'm i love and i'm excited about even though i won't be as successful right or do you stick with the thing that's terrible but i'm good at you know well that uh, you know the funny thing is just because he's brought art to his life like you can paint and feel good that you're painting and your friends look at it like oh i don't know know, (laughs) that's terrible (laughs) what are you doing you should stop doing this yeah you go i know but i love it yeah you know it's like if you have a genuine love for something then i know a lot of friends like that i have a lot of friends who genuinely you know like the henry winkler part in this like you know wants to teach acting loves acting he's a bit you know angry because he's Mm. been passed over and but in that world of that acting class, he's a, uh, you know, he, he's a god. Yes, he is. And the minute he leaves that acting class, he's just an out-of-work actor that no one <laughs> yeah. likes. I and think also uh, young people get the same, that same type of advice, uh, and it's always conflicting, where uh, someone will say to you, do the thing that you love, and that's what you should do if you have a passion for it, do right. it. And then you'll turn around, and another adult will tell you, you need to figure out what you're good at. <laughs> yeah, right, figure out what you're up. good and at. And like, yeah, and completely go yeah, forward. You need to make money 
versus yeah. And then you're yeah. going, uh, okay, should I find an in between between you guys? Or, well, it's yeah. like we always looked at Barry that because he had the training from the military to kill and and do that, he, you know, it was kind of like if a, a someone who took dance and went to a conservatory, went to the best dance teacher in the world, was an amazing dancer, and then could get no work. Mm-hmm. And so they become a stripper, right? You know? And then they they're not proud of it, but man, they make a ton of money. They do all this stuff. I just you know I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then you stop, you get out of it, and then if you come on hard times and you got to make money, it's like, well, I know I could go back to that. Yeah, it, it makes me feel terrible about myself. Yeah, you know. So that was the idea that we played with and HBO to their credit was like, no, we, they've fully got it. Yeah. They never questioned us once on, wait, what, what do you guys, what, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> yeah. you know, they never, they, they, they never were like the, what, this makes no sense. You know, they were, they were always on board. So, well, acting and the acting class scenes are so funny. Cause you brought up, you know, Guffman, but you could study for a lot of years in acting, and then you'll just see somebody who I don't know they were a rock star before, or they were a, a, you know in sports, and then they just come in and become a movie star. Yeah. Like it, there isn't, there's no fairness to yeah. it, and no payoff. Some people just have charisma. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah, they have it or they don't. You yeah, know? and it's just there's nothing you could do about it. You know, it's unfair. Yes. But yeah, and then that's a thing. It's like, if I, I always feel that if you, it's hard not to, and it's a bit, um, I don't know, but it, I, it, I, I just, I, uh, I really believe that if you genuinely just love the thing you're doing and you just work hard at it and you just try to get better at it and you're doing it for you and the thing in right. the show. So, um, you'll be fulfilled, you yeah. know? Um, but if you're doing it to be famous or make a lot of money and stuff like that, you're always going to be looking at people in the the other lane going, well, why the hell did they get that? And I yes. get this and I bust my ass and this person did it. Well, that, that's just going to happen regardless. And you got to, you got to get over yourself and just, <laughs> yeah. and just do your thing. Just right. work on your thing. And the, and those are the people you feel it in the work where they just are kind of going, no, I just do my own thing and I'm happy. And, and, you know, we would see, you know, Fred Armisen had a great thing where he's like, you know, a band had come into SNL and they were bitching about the band that was there the week before. Yeah. Oh, you guys had these guys on, they stink and blah, blah. And, <laughs> and they're both classic bands. And and uh, Fred said he was thinking, I have both your albums. I love them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I have, <laughs> thank you. I have, uh, you know, like, you guys are both great. <laughs> yeah, I, I I always thought it was funny that we are supposed to decide whether we pick Oasis or Blur. You know, what I mean, like this has nothing to do with us. Or when bands start to fight with each other, you yeah. know, what yeah. I mean. And now I got to decide if I'm going with David Lee Roth or Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, <laughs> this like, isn't my I don't fight. Care. Yeah, I don't care. Just play the music yeah. and shut up. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about your fight. <laughs> but it really is. You can always find a. You know, a Jim Carrey or an Adam Sandler and go, look at that guy. He gets everything. Yeah, it just seems weird to me when people get um, pissed off at other people's success. You know, I understand it at times if you know the person is like a legit bad person or something. And it's like, ah, man. But even then, you're just kind of like, well, don't watch their thing then. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And most of the time, you weren't up for the same part anyway. You know, yeah, but I've I know people they just they spin out when it's like, why are they doing this and that, and how did this person happen, and how did that movie get made with it? And I'm like, who cares? It's done. <laughs> just worry about your thing. Do you, yeah. Put all that energy into your yeah. thing, you know, and do your thing. No one ever spins that by thinking, oh, I guess this thing is possible. Nobody turns around right. and goes, oh man, you know, I think that he has less talent than me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm bound to get something. Yeah, like exactly. no one ever does the positive no, version no, of No, no one ever does the positive version <laughs> Well, there's always a, you know, when you hit certain ages is when stuff like that kicks in. Like I think if you're 19, the whole world looks like possibility. 30, there's some possibility. Then by 40, you're like, is nothing, you know, yeah. is nothing coming my yeah. way? Yeah. I I get it, yeah, but I I feel like if you just make your thing, right, just be good, just make that's the only thing you can control, right, is that 
You can't control anything else. Well, There's... you just brought up Fred, and what a strange, weird career that he mapped out. He's constantly working, yeah. and everything is in a different place yeah. that it looks like it wouldn't make any sense at but all. It, I think because he's following what he likes. It's yeah. just like, this is what I'm into. Yeah. You know, and... and you know, it's like we do that show documentary now, and it's, it's like that's for like that's a show for like five people. You know, <laughs> I mean, people watch that and they go, "What? You guys want to do a <laughs> Grey Garden yeah. spinoff?" Or that's wait, so what? That's and it's so like, no, it's going to be exactly like Grey Garden. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, the Spalding Gray was great to me because I remember seeing that on TV when he, when he first started to do those things, and two things it did. I went. Is anyone this strange? And then B, how do I live in New York? Is what yeah. was in my mind. Yeah. No, that one was so much fun to do. The Parker Gale, yeah, location is everything. That one, but yeah, the the but yeah, you do those because you like it. You know, John Mulaney and I wrote that one, and we like Spalding Gray, so it's yeah. like why not? And I think uh, when you start to get into the, you know, same thing with Barry, it'd be very easy to make the glib silly version of this because you go well you don't want to be too sad right because the audience has to be laughing and go no just play the reality of it and either they'll, they'll like it or they won't i can't help that but this this is the thing that we like you know? yeah but it isn't it funny and i don't know whether it's because i don't know how that happens that the guy could be a killer but then you feel bad that maybe he got his heart broke a little bit yeah like it's really strange like when you are challenged a little bit You'll, the audience, I think, will will take on that challenge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, you just got to play it honestly, you know, and there's things, you know, they're just trying to play it honestly. And, and you know, a lot of it isn't intuitive. And I think Alec and I are really good at, I'm kind of really, like, maybe too intuitive at times. <laughs> where I come up with, like, some weird idea. And then Alex really good at kicking the tires on that idea and kind of yeah. being more practical and going, well, then why would he do that? You know, why would, you know, and then, so I think that's why we have a, a good relationship. And I think Alec is incredibly good with finding where to infuse the humor into a thing. We're all, um, there's a moment with me and Henry Winkler at the end of the pilot where I kind of do a big monologue to him. And Henry Winkler's mm -hmm. response to that is Alec. That yeah. was Alex's joke, you know what right. I mean? Where he's like, "Oh, he should say this," and then yeah. we both started laughing. <laughs> and and that that yeah. that that's that's a perfect example of our partnership. As I write the long, sad yeah. monologue, and then he <laughs> buttons it with a joke. It is the difficulty about you know, like being that kind of an artist too, when people are always going to say, "Oh, use that." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, oh, your yeah. dad died. Use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, exploit yeah. that over and over. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing of use it. And it's like if Barry uses it, it he's going to have a nervous breakdown. Sure. Because yeah. he's seen the worst. It's just funny that all these people in the class, you know, like a lot of actors feel like they have such a hard life or they're pulling from all these places. And Barry's going, you know, yeah. I've, you have no idea the <laughs> yes. shit I've seen. Right. You know? Um. But yeah, it was nice playing that kind of a character. I I, I liked it. You know, it was, it was fun. Going back to uh, SNL the other night, is that uh, is that great, or do you still have that everyone expects tonight to be great? Oh yeah, I I put a lot of pressure on myself. I get very anxious. I've always had a lot of you know kind of anxiety and stuff. So it was kind of working through that. I'm still wrecked from it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I'm just so <laughs> tired. You know, like all day yesterday, I just slept. <laughs> yeah. I just was like, I'm still totally wrecked from it. Cause it's a, it's a lot, you know? And then, and then you do it. And while you're doing it, you're having a blast, mm -hmm. but the, the harnessing the, you know, uh, energy to do it when the anxiety and everything's pushing the energy down to where you don't want to move is that's hard. Yeah. Well, there was such a buzz in the city that you were coming back to do that. So everybody yeah. was trying to get tickets because everyone knows it's one of those, you know, next level expectations. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah. puts a lot of pressure on you. Yeah. 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 No, I felt that. Yeah, I felt that. That were they I went out to meet fans. And when I hosted last time, I went out to meet fans and there was like, you know, 12 people there. And I went, hey, yeah. how's it going? You know, and 
I'm out there, there's like 70 people outside, you yeah. know, waiting in the cold to get tickets. And I just went, uh, yeah. and everyone's like, isn't that exciting? I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to disappoint all those people. Well, yeah. I think that too, I always wonder, uh, it must be really exciting when you're a cast member to get a character that you're like, oh, that popped and this is going to be a reoccurring thing. But then the pressure of being like, this is a reoccurring thing and it has to be better, yeah, better than the last, last time. one. Well, yeah. yeah, when we do those Stefans, I think that's the reason because I do get so kind of rigid and I go over my stuff over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm just very rigid when I'm at SNL. Um, I just want to make sure that I hit the joke right. And because you have one chance to land it. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing on film and everything. You could do it over and over and over again and um and uh, so i think that's why john mulaney will come in and he'll change a couple of jokes or right he does a couple of things just to mess with me to kind of mm -hmm. just make me relax and have fun but also okay you're waiting for that but then that that uh, kiss me on my irish thing is going to be around forever now that, that was that so was a, an instant classic those are two new writers uh wrote that and they did oh God, they are so funny. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. Was yeah. So great. Yeah, yeah, that was such a smart uh, <laughs> premise. And it was funny on Wednesday. We read at the table read, and everyone was just, I couldn't get through it at the right. table read. And I, I was laughing the whole way through it at the table read, especially the line about you're about five decades too late. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what I love, no one's ever touched that premise, but I have friends from Ireland who said, they're like two degrees from each other all the time. Yeah. Like wherever you go on that island, you could bring up a guy's name and somebody will know them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the inbreeding is thousands of yeah, years. Yeah, we kind of went pretty hard on the Irish at that show. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan said, if you like St. Patrick's Day, are you just white and violent? <laughs> <laughs> if you're Irish, you're just white and violent. <laughs> uh, Barry uh, premieres this Sunday. March 25th on HBO. There's just, there's nothing to prepare yourself. It's very different yeah. from every show that you've ever seen, which is a very cool thing to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's why you go and do it at HBO. They just really, yeah. great, love it. <laughs> Good to see you again, my oh, thanks, friend. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Ben. And we'll see you next time you. Uh, coming through. Thank you. Love the Bill Hader. He's great. He is so fantastic. It really is a really cool show. So By I the definitely way, recommend it. That documentary it. now show that they did on IFC, which is uh I don't know who were the, the two main guys with that. It's the two of them, right? Yeah, it's Armisen and Hader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so strange and funny and hysterical and just some of these documentaries are not that well known no the majority of them aren't yeah. like if you watch the documentary you're obviously going to get but i'm like i always wonder if you don't know this documentary is this still going to be really funny because they go really deep and do really really funny references well, that are very specific yeah i know there's been documentaries that i hadn't seen before yeah and i'm still laughing you know what i mean <laughs> right. because if you have a documentary if you uh get seen by, let's say, 500,000 people. You're Black Panther at that point. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. You're as big as you can get. I don't know. I guess Michael Moore's documentaries have gone, yeah. you know, really big. Who's the other guy that we had in here, Chris? Morgan Spurlock? No, not Morgan. He's... Errol Morris? That's the guy. Errol Morris, His yeah. shit is so weird. So strange. Without even doing a parody of it. And also, you know, you see when people take inspiration from errol morris but it's like he's so unique that you're like hey we can really tell you've just taken that from yes. errol morris because nothing else sounds or feels like that on tv or in movies so anytime you see a documentary that is inspired like that you're like yeah but he kind of has his own thing you can't really he do is that. a like a unique guy and i remember when i even met him i'm like you kind of remind me of Paul O a little bit, you know? <laughs> but there's always certain dudes, like when you interview them, that their first response is always, no, um, <laughs> that's just not true. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is making that noise? This computer? Hear that weird noise? The it sounds like, like, yeah, like I can't bacon's frying. I can't hear it through the headphones, but when I took them off, I could hear it. It's just got like a high-pitched. No, it's, it. it's vibrating. It's like it's a, overheating. A, a fucking, I know. It's like an Austin fucking package. 
eyes. Shut this down. Okay. Get it out before it fries my eyes out. <laughs> I've never heard a computer start to make those noises. Maybe war games that would do that. We had trouble with that before, right? A computer. Yes. That's what happens when you buy a computer for $100. <laughs> Sooner or later. Well, well, well. We haven't uh, heard from this person in a long time. A BL. <laughs> I had to go pee pee. That was the sound of the computer. No, that doesn't Sorry, make sense. I take a hot whiz before I give a spring training report, Benny. Uh, oh, yeah, you are down there spring training. What team are you following this year? Well, I have a feeling that between the Phillies, the Yankees, the Mets, the Phillies are supposed to be the big surprise. I'm not kissing Benny's ass. Hello to everybody, by the way. It's BL. Hello, Live. BL. Huh? How many games have you, how many spring training games have you been to? Oh, I don't go to those games. I, oh. Jesus. You I said spring fail. training report. I thought maybe you had something you to report. Scout a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, I go by the Phillies camp every day and check out everything going That's on. That's what I was asking about. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. How can you not go watch everything going on there? And I, I, miss the, I miss the old stadium that was kind of run down. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? The old Jack Russell. This new thing that they do now, and it's been a while, it's just like being at an actual stadium. See, that it sounds really fun because I loved that old one. Yeah. Gail, you must have been a little baby during that stadium, right? <sighs> yes, I was a baby. Yeah, we were all babies at one point, BL, each and every one of us. But Although you were born as a middle-aged woman. <laughs> <laughs> I was a poor white child, Ron. BL, why didn't you get on the, on the air with Bill Hader? I would have loved to have introduced you to. Oh, my God, I jumped off the I'm not going to sit there with that phenom from SNL. Are now, you crazy? I jumped off that line so fast. Yeah, I saw your name up, and I was going to go to you, and you, and you popped what you said. You went to take a hot whiz. <laughs> now, she said to me the other day, can I call you? And I go, yes, everyone is allowed to call. And then she checked in with Chris, and Chris told her not to call. Well, we, I told her that I was going to schedule a call with her. That's what Why I, do you schedule a call? She's a caller. Well then she yeah. then she can just call. I mean I think she's being she's she's just she should just call like she But did why today. why 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 would you say get back with me and I'll schedule a call? Because yeah. she was texting me in the morning and I was busy and I was just like I am gonna I'll talk to BL a little later. That's yeah, but happened. why wouldn't you just say call anytime you want? That's what I'll, I'll tell from now on. But the time don't uh, BL, I gotta tell you this. Don't text him. I'm gonna guess you're not a big BL fan. I'm not the biggest no. BL fan, no. Yeah. No. No, he hates me. Now, why do you think he hates you? Like, Chris, I want you to write down why you hate her, and okay. then I'm going to ask oh, her. this is fun. Yeah, okay. see if we can match up. <laughs> Gail, if you'd like well, to. It's a I think it's a jealous Chris episode, but I love Chris. I think he's a great producer, but uh, he gets jealous of a, a lot of things. All right, so you think it's jealousy, right? And Chris, what was your answer? She has called me fat and incompetent on multiple occasions. All right, oh I'm going to give, if you would have matched with this, I would have doubled the money. I just put up, they had sex. <laughs> Did you guys ever I have sex? That. We have never had I sex. I did that, but I ain't from Romania, 511, and got Chris's cash in my pocket. Catch me outside. Now, <laughs> would you have sex with her, Chris? I would not have sex with BL. Hold on, because no. <laughs> I'm going to ask you the next thing. Anal. Would you have anal with her? I mean, yeah, I'll have anal with BL, yeah. but I, I will not go near the vagina. That seems more intimate. Let me tell you, I had a, a friend who uh, dated BL, and by dated, I mean banked her. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said to me, and, and this was many years ago. He said, with, with BL, when it's anal or oral, yeah. it feels exactly the same. Interesting. There is no difference. Wow. <laughs> now this is exciting. Yeah. I'm clear which is more like which. Huh? Biel, who's the most famous person you had sex with? Was it... Uh, Dude, I hook all the famous people up. Is it, you get it? I had I had heard that it's Groucho Marx. Is that true? Wow. <laughs> Only a threesome. Me, him, and Greta Garbo. Okay. You're being funny now.
Can't you be current, Ron? This yeah. is somebody current. Why so, are you getting You like, say that this is a spring uh spring training report. What are you uh what are you reporting on? Well, I got one word, Aaron fucking Boone. We all remember the time where he got his name. Do you remember? Aaron name? Boone came to from his parents. <laughs> No, Aaron Boone goes through a long bloodline of people. I know more than Chris Flanley. Flan, Flanley. Are you excited Flanley. about Boone coaching I, your team? I'm uh, confused. He's a player's coach. I, right? People love him. Like yeah. he, gets, he gets along well with everyone. Though he forgot to put a picture in or something last week. Like He made some giant mistake that was insane. It was really bad. It's the kind of mistakes I'd be if I just took over a ball team. Like, oh shit, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. They, they had to keep in the starter because he forgot to call the bullpen to warm up the reliever. Yeah, that's the thing that happens when you come in zero, zero experience. None at any level of coaching baseball. He's just like a nice guy. Yeah. And Chris, I'm not sure if you remember or Ron, but wasn't he like a third base coach? He was only third base and now he's the shit. That's, he's dope, man. Well, he was out of the game for a while, right? He was, yeah. what was he? What was his job? Was he like, um, was, looks like, wasn't he like Fox baseball? On air? Yeah, he was doing that, and then, but then he was doing some other front office thing. It seems very odd yeah, that was, he got this gig. No one knows why he got it other than that everyone gets along with him. That's the only reason. All I know is him. those Red Sox are freaked out because ALCS, he jacked one out of the park out of freaking nowhere, and that's where he got Aaron fucking Boone. Maybe somebody didn't know that. You're supposed to set the table, Stanley. Man, <laughs> this is why you two don't get along. Yeah. God. I, I mean, there's an attraction there for yeah. sure. I mean, there's it's definitely lightning. Strictly between. anally, though. Strictly well, anal I don't do anal. And Stanley stuck with Mickey Calloway as his manager. What's that fucker going to do? He now, ain't got dick. Now, the I also wanted to say this about BL. BL, you said you've never done anal, right? Ever. No, never. Swear. I never heard this from another anal. guy who uh, used to date BL. Not only has she never done anal. And I'll back her up on that. She doesn't even wipe her ass. Oh, God. You know, oh she stays God. that far away from what she calls the bunger. That sounds like a phobia to me. <laughs> I don't think so. Natural. I think it's just... Um... <laughs> My butt is cleansed, and I carry those wipes, and I use that spray that you... The poop spray. You put it on a little... Now, uh, BL, uh, I, I, know, I know you were in a bad breakup so bad that the police actually had to <laughs> come and, as you told me, you were impounded. Um, <laughs> she goes, the police impounded me last night. They was shouldn't there, be allowed to do that. Is there a boot on you, too? They tried to have a walk clear my ass. Now, how <laughs> far... How close are you allowed to get to your ex before that ankle bracelet goes off? He did not put me in prison, and he did not. He did not put a restraining order. So I grow. I drop by and honk and flip him off and shit past his jewelry store. But besides that, I don't go near the fucker. It's not a jewelry store, BL. He's a pawnbroker. Yeah, he's a pawn guy. Yeah. So now you could talk about him before you said some very famous people had to go there and pawn things. Because of gambling debts. And she told me famous sports people wow. and some famous news people. So, BL, you yeah, want to give so us one of those stories now that. Well, allegedly, I am on a non disclosure, but yes, that's true. Nine rings in his shop. He kept all of them out of respect to the players. Nine Super Bowl rings? Uh, one Super Bowl ring from the Buccaneers. Uh-huh. And then um, there's two Yankees and one Phillies ring. And again, I got to be real careful here. But it's true. These guys get in trouble. And, and allegedly, they're playing cards. And they're playing cards in houses or at a facility uh, famous. And they have to go there. Yeah, at the Hard Rock uh, Casino in Tampa. Uh, oh, don't bring Johnny up. It's not Johnny's place. It's the Tampa. Well, you place never. Go. I'm never going to blame a casino for doing what they do, and then the people owe them the money. You know, what I mean, that'd exactly. be like gl blaming a bar because the guy's an alcoholic, <laughs> or yep. blaming a hooker because the guy got a bad disease from her vagina. Oh, why'd you do this to me? Yeah. yeah. That's so nine that's different championship rings that he's got, and you said one boxing, one championship boxing belt. That's the coolest oh, one, I think. Yeah. yeah. One belt, and then there's also one World Series poker bracelet that is fantastic. World Series of poker, and those mm. are diamond studded. Now, what would he give me if I went down there and said, um, "What could I buy 
a ring for? Let's say the Buccaneers. Uh, Ray, if I wanted to give it to Fez. He'd love them. Yeah, I know. He was, he deserves it, too. He really he does. back that it. team. I'd give it to Fez. I love Fez. Uh, When's the I last time say- you two kids talked? You, you're about a mile away from each other. No, stop. No, he won't talk to me. I've tried at Ross Reback, your former agent's funeral, and he won't speak to me. I can't help it. I've tried. I've done everything but blow him. He won't talk to me. But let's go back to the ring. You asked blow him, maybe. I'm Give up the ass. Huh? Hmm? Uh, 30 grand for a ring, for a player ring. That's how much it would cost me? Well, they're made by, they're made by Tiffany, so he gives the player at least allegedly between sixteen and 28000 if they need some money to play some cards or what they might. It, sometimes it does save the player. Maybe they have somebody sick. It, he's helped them. But I feel so sorry Palm for these guys. The cool help. part about my ex is that he doesn't find it funny to say their name, who it is, so he puts black electrical tape around the ring, and he respects the player to not, because everybody's been there. Everybody gets in trouble. I mean... Mm-hmm. Aren't there people in there that gamble? Don't you have anybody on your staff that's gotten in trouble before? Uh, well, clear? Chris has got a little gambling thing, mm. but never for big money. You never, you're never going to say, I'll go in for five grand when you don't have it. No, I won't. That's the one thing that I somehow have fucking avoided where I like, if I don't have it, yeah. You don't put it up. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. But so, you have put up money that you should be keeping or saving. Yes, he puts <laughs> up his food money. Yeah. Yeah, but no, he does do that. But I've never, and I've worked with three different people that have had major gambling things. Most of them work in sports radio. Most of the guys that you hear on the air in Mm -hmm. sports radio have run into some serious gambling problems before. Well, that that always seems like the scariest, because then there could be possible to be someone fucking coming after you for the fucking money. Well, yeah. I know of a guy that on Broad Street, they found him, a rat ate his penis off, and then there were 300 rats on him, and they stuck him in a warehouse because he couldn't pay a lousy five Gs. Somebody will kill you for 500 now, boys. I mean, First of all, so the story you're telling is not true. It sounds like no they one spend, had their penis eaten off by a rat. Sounds like they spent uh, at least 500 <laughs> on rats. <laughs> well, they found him on Broad Street in Philly. He didn't pay his debt. And there were like 300 rats on him, and his penis was eaten first because it had peanut butter. I mean, well, who was he against? The fucking Joker? Penguin? Who's going to. No one's just going to throw a bunch of rats on you. Get the penis. You've been trained. Go for the penis. See, That's like peanut butter. Buddy, this, this guy says shit's about to get real around here, motherfuckers. Pardon my language. Why are you yelling like that? I'm sorry. When a rat eats your penis off, it's, it's critical. Now, what happened to your radio gig, BL? Remember when oh the first day we tried to go on help BL? So f- and she was talking like this. Well, Ron. Very professional. Yeah. That was my wackiest day with you, BL. <laughs> I'm sorry you've pulled through it. You pushed through it, though, Ron. Hey, yeah, I forgot yeah. to promote this today, and obviously uh, I brought it up with my producers. They forgot. I want us to retweet. Little Lene has done uh, Reservoir Bitches. Now, Lene basically grew up on my show, the Rana yeah. Fez show. She was a little girl. We used to tease her because she had a lisp. And she's an adult now. And in college, I think it's Pace University. And they did Reservoir Dogs with looks like all girls <laughs> and a gay guy. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it doesn't at all. The gay guy comes out of nowhere. And there's no, like spin on this no parody it's just them doing, doing the it. same lines yeah. yeah yeah and it's not even like in a diner they don't, they don't even shoot it in the fucking it's like in a random restaurant it should be in a diner if they're gonna do reservoir Look, first right. of all, i think you're nitpicking yeah I mean, you're that doesn't attacking like a big and even the last did you stay around for the last scene oh i watched the whole thing walking down the street <laughs> they haven't picked like even an alley it's just a regular road yeah it's in a story i know exactly where they're going but you know what it's like like when you're in high school and college oh, yeah. making these things oh yeah absolutely you know and just the fact that they made it is great really because lene d's dad's name is all over this fucking thing I mean, if this is for the for Lene's career or whatever. Like his her her father shouldn't be fucking bookending the whole goddamn thing. Which is there's just... nothing wrong with working with your father. He okay. um, 
Mikey, I for apparently- one think it's a fun thing to do. <laughs> Mikey apparently <laughs> produced it. Oh, he produced it. Did he yeah. download the script from fucking IMDb? <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Now Amazing. I feel like I'm taking a shot or two. <laughs> this thing's just... Vito, what did right. you think of it? I mean, I went to film school and I saw that exact concept done a lot. Well, all you have to do is go to YouTube and put in Reservoir <laughs> Bitches, and I couldn't find her. There's so many. Oh, my God. <laughs> that every one of those YouTube Vito accounts should get a fucking producer credit. Well, maybe Vito could stare at her nipples. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, remember, didn't, 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 he, didn't you try to uh, rape her when she had a flu? No, I yeah. didn't try to rape anybody. I can't follow the whole Me Too you thing. I was wrongfully accused of allegedly seeing BL in the nude, but I never saw her in the nude. I've never been to her hotel. BL like used got- to bang a boss of mine. And, uh, oh, right. and uh, they used to do it in the office during really? the work day. We did not. Yeah, I heard that from. Uh, uh, a couple, like one of his receptionists. No, dude. Oh, she was 85,000 years old. She wanted to bang him, allegedly. Okay. Yeah. She didn't like you at all, B.L. They didn't huh? like each other? No, his person? Yeah. No. Well, B.L. was a home wrecker. I was mm-hmm. not. Yeah, you wrecked his home. Huh? Didn't you wreck his home? No, I didn't wreck his home, Ron. It's like I wouldn't wreck anybody's home. That's not cool to date some dude that's got a nice little family, boy, girl, well, just goes to work every day. You don't go screwing with somebody. Like, like uh, that's what broke my heart about um, Rhymes with Florentine, comedian. His poor little love. Uh, I, I forgot about this. BL huh? has a gigantic. She does. Yeah. yeah. And I said to Jim Florentine, and he goes, I go, BL is digging you. And he goes, Oh, I couldn't even get Don Jameson to fuck her. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's mean. Yeah. No, Florentine would love my ass. You know what the problem is? He's got the same birthday as my ex. He's a Leo. Holy <laughs> shit. Don't get witchy on me, you nut. I like fucking ketchup. I'm sorry, Florentine. That's, this shit's going to get real again. No, I think I might get him to, if I could talk to him, he might toss you a mercy one, or at least <laughs> let you blow him, but... Oh, that's nice. Ron. Yeah, that sounds fun. No, I don't have sex with Ron's friends, and secondly, I canceled my trip to St. Louis this weekend, because he's at the St. Louis Comedy Club where my mother lives, right by there. Why does your mom live in the St. Louis Comedy Club? <laughs> Florentine is there? Yeah, he's in St. Louis this weekend, and I canceled my trip. I'm like, that's too tempting, man. I ain't going to see his shit. Yeah, but women no love Jim Florentine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does well he's with the ladies. He's got an ass on him. No, he's got an ass, and he's tall. Oh. He's like fucking six eight. Fuck. None of those Fine. things is true. Mm-hmm. He has a regular guy's ass, and he's, I would say, normal height. <laughs> but women do like him. And he has a really cute <laughs> son. His son is he adorable. He does. I think that Jim Florentine's great, but I don't know if I've ever taken a gander. <laughs> Mm. At the ass, I, I don't have, think. You know, I, have. I brought him up on stage so I get a nice close look. Sure, nice. I'd say an average man. Is. Just like a... he's a great storyteller, though. Hilarious. Ron introduced me to him at the stand that one <laughs> night. Says me and Ben. But you made it seem like <laughs> I pulled the both of you together and tried to play no. matchmaker. That's not true. I introduced him on stage. Is what I did, dude. I'm too young for Florentine. He can get some. Fine. Dude, then that doesn't mean that you're young, BL. You're older than most <laughs> vampires. <laughs> I know a, a mummy that was a freshman when you were a senior. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. Once I get naked, it comes out. And this is some shit right here. I'm Stop telling it. you. This is dope. This I don't is think. Dope. I think a big turn off is that one time your pussy fell out. Oh. Did you even know it's that was not. possible, Chris? No, I thought that all stays inside no matter no, what. It all fell out once. Fuck. Oh, God. God. And it's only been jammed <laughs> about three quarters of the way up there. <laughs> oh, no. There's still a lot hanging out. Oh, fuck. But what was that from? Do you, from a gangbang, BL? Why did that happen? <laughs> Ron, come on now. This ain't cool. This I see Ellen like that. Train report. Yeah. Come on, dude. BL, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> I want you to go yes, see sir. Black Panther tonight and then call us tomorrow with a movie review. I'm trying to hey, catch I up on it. One over the weekend. Hey, Vito, are you going with us tomorrow night to that movie? Yeah, I am. How come? 
uh, the girl who does booking asked me if I wanted to go as well, and I said yes. Do me a favor. Find me a box of caramel corn for that thing. Okay. Because it's a, at a screening room, right? Yeah, 55th. Tell everybody where it is. Come on, man. Well, I'll be there. I'll be. Hey, when am I coming to New York City again? What do you think? I'm sorry, BL. You're breaking up. I can't hear you. Oh, you mm-hmm. <laughs> BL, is that you? Did we lose yes. her, Chris? Doesn't look good. His phone's me. on. BL, you there? Mm. BL. Oh, I wish I could have made out what she said. Um, here's C in New Orleans. C. Ronnie B, man. I went to the uh, casino this morning and dropped some uh, change. And in the interest of uh, not getting my penis eaten off by rats, <laughs> uh, I, was, I was hoping you could uh, hook me up with Flats. I hear he has some financial deals here and there. Flats is, uh, well, he's running a big deal for this la- this laugh lounge. Uh, which is seeing comedy on your telephone. You'll see it live as it's happening. Nice. Um, I was watching uh, that show, This Is Not Happening, the other night. Yeah. And our old buddy Tom Rhodes was on there telling drunk stories about when he shed at the bed <laughs> in Hong Kong. <laughs> Was that bottom for him? <laughs> no. no. He had years left before it became a bottom. Chris, you ever get so drunk that you shit the bed? Um, I've only pissed and puked in the bed, never shit. You piss in the bed, that should be a bottom. I Look, this is what happened. I feel like it's happened a couple of times. Uh, but two of the times, is I believe, because I was also on a bunch of like Sudafed and whatnot. So I think that is what caused me to piss myself because I'd never done it before that. Right. And the next time I did it was because, again, I was sick and drinking heavily. Have you ever had a dream like where you're pissing in the dream? Yeah, I've had I have. And like you can't stop pissing. But then I wake up and I go, oh, I'm amazed I didn't piss myself. Yeah. Because you're trying to piss. I've had poop dreams like that. It really (laughs) scared me. Like I woke up and I was like, I could have shit myself. It's really scary. I I don't think I've ever had a poop dream. I did. And (laughs) I've had like a couple. And like it always, I always wake up really scared. Like I have to check myself. (laughs) I had a, (laughs) I had a friend who's, uh, functioning alcoholic and you know who he is right so one night it was one of those things where i'm more younger and everyone fucking passes out all over the place and you're in different beds and people on couches and floors and he wakes up and he had pissed himself and he goes like this who the fuck pissed on me and he was fucking serious he thought someone came in and pissed on him i go not on your face not in your hair you right? think on someone your... came in and pissed on your crotch. <laughs> Why would they do that? Man, I had a whole, like, I know several guys who would get really drunk and then wake up drunk and then pee in weird places. Like, open a closet door, open a drawer. I've done that A too. friend of mine peed in uh, my roommate's makeup bag. Just, like, just, just peed right into it. And I don't know... Like, I'm really curious yeah. what this thing is, because I've only known men to do it. Yes. I had one, like, pretty bad, like, kind of pee incident while I was drunk, but it was like, I was so drunk, I was taking off my pants, and then I <laughs> sat down and I was peeing, and then all of a sudden, like, this doesn't feel right, and I had left my underwear on. That have, <laughs> I've known women. into my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I've known women that have done that, and it's always, that comes up in a lot of, 12 step things where they'll go. Oh, wow. And then I peed in my underwear. Oh, no. And I knew that I was a lousy <laughs> fucking drunk bitch and I stopped myself. <laughs> um, there was always a thing with Kinnison where he would pee in a suitcase, his own suitcase. Yeah. That's similar to this idea. I don't know why. I've only known men who do this where they, they pee in strange places, almost like sleepwalking and peeing somewhere weird. Dude, I was a little kid, and I had a high fever, like a really high fever, and my mom came in, and I was going to pee in the in the hamper, but I was laughing really fucking hard, oh, no. like, like I'm going to piss in the, in the hamper. Oh, no. And then, like, she was like, like, she didn't even get mad at me. She just, like, you know, okay, turned so me around and got me back. Yeah, because I was running, like, a 107. <laughs> You were just boiling your brain. Yeah, on the remember inside. when you were a little kid, you would get so hot, it would be unbelievable. Yeah. Like people would get concerned. Like the highest fever I've had since I was a little kid 
99. I know. But, but when you're a little kid, it's nothing to hit 105. I know. It, it's really weird. And I have a, several memories of being that level sick. Yeah. And I remember like the feeling of almost uh, just being in a different state, almost like a drugged out oh, state. Yeah, you because are you're, and then I remember like my mom sounding really scared on the phone with the doctor or the hospital or something. And I was just like, this sounds bad. But I was just like, <laughs> what is this? But I was just like so little and just feeling. And you know that feeling like your fever is so bad, but you're cold. So oh, you yeah, think yeah. that you just yeah. want to like be shakes. warm. And I just remember trembling, but my brain felt hot. I remember though, like when you say that thing of... Uh, one time in Florida, we were playing basketball in the middle of the day, and then it was like a really hot day, but a bunch of us were playing basketball. I fucking turned around. I'm like, man, I'm fucking freezing. And then other people are going like this. I'm fucking cold, too. I was just hot a second ago. And then like one of the guys that we were playing ball with was like a trainer, and then he started screaming at us, Hydrate! You're on the first things of fucking... Oh, my yeah. God. It's like a heat stroke was coming on. Oh, no. This. And I was like, I'm going to put my sweatshirt on. <laughs> Chilly out here. But that, why does that... Um, why does that happen when you're a kid? Why do you get hotter than you can ever get the rest of your your life i have no idea it's like fevers and earaches are super common with kids very rare for adults sometimes you get the same thing at the yeah. same time um but yeah i don't know the last time i had an earache but i used to get earaches so bad when i was a little kid and they were excruciating it was like a twisting knife in your eardrum yeah and you yeah. just couldn't imagine a pain worse and then i maybe had like one ear infection over the age of 18. And I might have been like 19 or 20. And that's the last time it happened to me. It's so odd, man. That is so fucking odd. Why that happened? And I remember like being in a pool and my mom going, Get out of there, you're going to get an earache. And I'm like, Never. <laughs> <And that night. laughs> you just dropped to your knees. Yeah. But I remember when I was uh, a kid, I had. Um, I don't know, some kind of like uh, scarlet fever. So bad that I was actually hearing voices. Well, hallucinating. What's yeah. that? Hallucinating? An, like an yeah, auditory. Yeah, auditory hallucinating. Yeah, that's a thing. And when I was a child, I had a fever and my hands felt like two balloons. <laughs> wow. Just he like said, Pink wow. Floyd. <laughs> Kate, in uh, Since a Buggy. Um, I have a story of my uh, roommate in college. Her boyfriend was not the best drunk. I came yeah. home from bartending, and I went to bed. Everyone was already in bed, and all of a sudden I heard my door open, and I look up. I'm like, who is it? And he said, this is Nick. And I said, Nick, this is Kate's room. And he said, this is Nick. And then I'm like, what the hell is he doing? And then the like, light, the moonlight shined on, and he's butt-ass naked. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Go You're like, I'm going to blow you. <laughs> <laughs> no guys will wander around naked yeah. and that was the other thing in Rhodes's fucking story he was in Ireland and he went you know he wakes up in the middle of the night he has to take a fucking piss he walks in the bathroom and the door shuts behind him and he's in the hallway not in the <laughs> no. fucking bathroom and he's totally naked <laughs> and like the desk clerk is like don't worry dude this is Ireland it happens all the fucking time <laughs> Um. All right. Uh, the next laugh lounge is going to be Tuesday, March twentieth. Is that tomorrow? That's tomorrow. All right. Hey, uh, Jack. Jack in Virginia. Ronnie B. Fly it or fly, my man. Hey, what's up? Um, my wife. I've been sober for a dozen years, but several years before that, my wife and I traveled to. Uh, Chamonix, France, to ski with a couple of friends. And the first uh, night we were there, I proceeded to get way overserved uh -huh. and um, woke up in a strange place. And um, my wife <laughs> turned on the lights and what the fuck are you doing? I was uh, relieving myself in a book bag that had, uh, among other things, our passports in it. And um, I was given a major timeout the following day. Not nearly a bottom. <laughs> 
You can't piss on the passports. Mm-hmm. Evidently not. I mean, that literally looks like you don't belong in this country, <laughs> no matter where you're going. Yeah. Nothing is more suspicious than a passport that smells like piss. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sir, we're going to need you to step aside. God, was she displeased. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good husband stuff. All right, Bye thanks, time. man. Get Peace. Back. I got blackout drunk in my uh, my ex girlfriend. I was at her apartment, and it was a rough night. And you peed in her butt again? <laughs> Not that, but you I used did. To pee in her she butt. asked you to. <laughs> she liked it. Uh, I, I she told me she told me. So I have no recollection. Is I got up, didn't go to sleep till like six, seven in the morning, but I was blacked out at that point. Passed out, get up, and I started peeing in a bag of um, of. <laughs> Of souvenirs of hers from like some trip she took. And I'm just pissed. Why though? I don't know. And this then she's like sa- a thing. And this then is she like says, a weird thing. Chris, what are you doing? I'm like, what? I'm pissing. I'm in going to the bathroom. I thought I was in the in a place where you should be pissing. Yeah. But you had to find a bag. That's what's weird. Like you're trying is- to find some kind of receptacle. Yeah. That's I mean, that was what was weird about when my friend pissed in my roommate's makeup bag is that like he had like opened said bag. Right. And she woke up and he was just going like what? What? Just let me finish. Like, yeah. and like that's how his brain was working. I don't mm-hmm. understand what. No this one is. understands. There's no doctor. No people who studied DNA or child psychology. None of them know why this is. I had another friend piss on another friend sleeping, like a f- sleeping feet. Just walked up and that's just started because his feet were yeah. sticking off of the couch, barefoot, yeah. as he was crashing on someone's couch. And he just peed directly onto the feet. Chris pissed in an aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> they had it coming. Yeah. Well, it was one of those big ones, like, that they have that the kids go to visit. <laughs> was it a small one? <laughs> he actually went in, broke into the place, and pissed in the, in the shark tank. I hopped out of a cab drunk one night, and I had to pee. And I was so drunk, instead of peeing on a wall, I saw an empty village voice fucking thing. And I peed in there because I thought it was the best hiding place. Like we're talking about waking from a sound sleep. You, were, you awake. were awake. That was a I was real, I was blackout. I couldn't function at this point though. Italians can't drink. <laughs> you ever notice that they, Italians wine. don't like hard liquor? Stick to wine. Yeah, that's stick to wine. That's what they do best. Suckle on it. Maybe even fucking <laughs> maybe a little zambu. Yeah. Why don't you uh get a fucking champagne and put a sugar cube in there? <laughs> Why do they do that? I only saw that in that Moonstruck movie. They were dropping little sugar cubes in the champagne. That's gross. It stayed with me all these years. It's really weird because it's already r- it's a ridiculous amount of sugar in champagne in the first place. I wouldn't know, Chris. Yeah, it's not sweet. I'm not fucking breaking it down the way you do. <laughs> I didn't know that you were a nutritionist. <laughs> yeah. You don't fucking look at anything and tell you how many calories it has. Oh, that good, yeah. Cup but, of water, zero. But then why do they always say that if you're like, uh, if you're on a diet or something, you're going to drink something, why do they say sham- that you should drink champagne if know. it has so much sugar? I I've never even heard that. Yeah. I always thought like, they said vodka. Yeah. That's like number two. Really? Is it champagne? And then they always say like vodka and seltzer with some lime and that's the, but that's pretty much it. You don't, don't mess with the brown liquors. I know tequila no has beers. a lot of sugar in it. Beers is probably the worst thing for you, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's going to be like, it's just like a soup. Best nope. thing it's for like you is just eat open. Carby <laughs> soup. <laughs> I just fucking drink like acid milk from that fucking Stanley Kubrick movie. <laughs> oh, do, do, do. Um, hey, Eric in Canada. <laughs> Thanks for not saying Acadia. Uh, I, uh, I I got so violently ill after drinking a lot of vodka that it actually pulled the toilet up off of the moorings. So wow. uh, when you when you flushed, all the water came out from underneath the toilet. Yeah. So I jumped up on top of the toilet and started smashing it down so that it wouldn't leak no more. <laughs> Wiped all the water up, went to bed. Two weeks later, it starts leaking again. So I yell at the, the landlord, and I go, hey, the, the fucking toilet's leaking from underneath there. He says, well, toilets don't leak from there unless you've done something. What do you do? And I'm going, I didn't fuck all, man. I told him 20 years later. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's when I'll eventually <laughs> tell stuff that I did, even if that. 
I'll still keep things that from my parents today if they start asking me if I did it. I'll like, no. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it all the time. <laughs> uh, I forgot to bring this up. Opie is bringing back the Opie radio show. And it's going to be, I didn't even know they were doing this. Westwood won the podcast. Oh, yeah. wow. When I was at uh, NEW in New York, Westwood One used to put us on their weird AM stations. Yeah, I remember that. You'd be on like on 70 AM stations, but then you wouldn't take a call from any of them. <laughs> and I'm like, could there be a fucking station with zero listeners? And I guess there were. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time... You put on the AM radio. You'd have to be a, a 1010 Wins fan, and even they have moved, right? Yeah, like, they have, yeah. They're on... Yeah, they're on FM here in New York whatever City. Whatever happened with K-Rock when they came back, and they're playing classic rock? I never heard about it again. I thought now they're uh, alt. They're like 92.3 alt. They're like um, like 90s music, 90s rock now. That is, is fucking classic rock. Shit, yeah. Yeah. 90s music is classic. I've heard it uh, like in some Uber car, Uber drivers, but that's... Well, I mean, it's like 25 years ago that, you know, fucking Pearl Jam came out. Yeah. And when Classic Rock started, I think it was only 10 years before, you know? So Classic Rock probably started in like, I don't know, 78. They started playing music from 68. <laughs> like, this is when things were fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Back when rock really rock. <laughs> Classic rock. <laughs> I remember like if the Stones would put out a new record, Classic Rock wouldn't play them, even though they were playing all these Stones songs. And they would just go like this, Stones are coming out with a new record. We'll get to that in about 10 years from today. <laughs> classic rock. <laughs> Just the classics. <laughs> who's your favorite out of all the classic rock? If someone said, who's the cl definitive classic rock band, what band would you say? I think The Doors. We do. Uh, Rolling Stones? I think The Stones are the definitive. I think you have to say The Stones. I think there's one that's going to beat it. I think Led Zeppelin is the definitive oh, yeah, true. classic rock band. Yeah. Somebody sent me this thing the other day with David Crosby, our pal who's done the show. Someone wrote to them, hey, what did you think of uh, the personality and the playing of the late uh, Ray Manzarek of The Doors? And he just wrote, lame. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I love David that. Crosby's got to be 70-some <laughs> years old. Oh, my God. That lame. dude was a lame-o. Fucking so <laughs> lame. I don't know if the Doors had any like pals, like any other bands that they hung out well, with. Well, like, do you remember when we were doing uh, GPS LA mm -hmm. and we, they kind of, we were having trouble figuring out where to place them in that scene because there wasn't really any other bands that kind of flowed into them or, flo you know what I yes. mean? They kind of stood alone. Yeah, they're a different kind of group. What's this? <laughs> yes, but I can't, couldn't see it through it. All right. Um, we do got to take a break here, Christopher. Yes, we do. We haven't broken but yet. I just want you to see this, Gail. I can't. All I you saw was the. No, I was seeing the back lettering. <laughs> um, all right. Next time you have to go to the grocery store, pay attention to how long it takes. Actually, don't waste your time. I'll tell you, too long. It's 2018. The days of going to the grocery store, battling for a parking space, and searching high and low for some obscure ingredient are over. It's time to say hello to HelloFresh, the meal kit delivery service that makes cooking healthy, delicious meals Fun, easy, and convenient. Just go to HelloFresh.com. Pick out the recipes you want, and they're delivered directly to your doorstep. They come every week in a special insulated box, along with easy-to-follow step-by-step instructions and full-color pictures. Each HelloFresh box includes fresh, seasonal ingredients that are perfectly portioned. No wondering if you have the right amount and no waste, just delicious meals that you can make in 30 minutes or less. And for limited time, you can get $30 off your first box when you go to HelloFresh.com slash raw. Plus, 
free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash raw for $30 off. HelloFresh.com slash raw. Luis J. Gomez. Dave Smith will be here soon. They're going to be in Boston. Um, hey, Gail Meets Girls with Ida Rodriguez was uh, fantastic. Oh, thanks so much. If you missed it this weekend, it is up on demand. Uh, so you can just put in. I demand to listen to it. You can demand it by going to On Demand and uh, typing in the old Gail Meets Girls. Yeah, that was a great conversation. And Ida is really funny and super smart. And very cool. And taller than me, as everyone wanted to point out. <laughs> I did notice that. I, I, You know, until that picture, I thought you two were around the same height. I know, it's weird, right? I think she's taller than Chris. Chris, how tall are you? I'm a 6'1". That's all? She's yeah. taller than you. Oh, Jesus. Achoo. Bless Dwarfs you. Me. Sorry. Never hold in a sneeze. I just have a giant uh, belief in that. Hey, there's a, a great piece up on the eye bang where James Adonian is uh, calling out SNL and the fact that they've never had a a gay person on there. But uh, it's been a lot of years since uh, I think his name was Terry Sweeney. But no one would be better on SNL than James Adonis. Oh, no. He would be fantastic. There's always people like that that you're just shocked that didn't get scooped up. Chris he, Stanley. I, I always thought he'd be good. Or on the uh, cast? Yeah. Featuring, maybe. He does uh, a Stan Laurel that's unbelievable. Go ahead, Chris. Do it. I'm Stan Laurel. All right. That's uh, not it. That's not the one you do. I think he did He's Paul Morris. Yeah, he did. And a lot of times, you know it's a good impression if they tell you the name of the person. <laughs> See, that's what I was doing for Lauren at the audition, but they weren't having it. You just called him Lauren. I heard it. Lauren. Start a revolution from my bed. Mark. Mark. What's up, buddy? Yeah. 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 What sorry. can we do with you? Hey, sorry, Bennington. Yeah. So you guys were talking about being in strange places um, mm. and also auto uh, hallucinations. Okay. I had both of those recently. I was in the hospital for pancreatitis. And uh, I was on Dilaudid and Ativan. And even though I had a, my own restroom in my room, thought it would be a good idea to rip my IV out and start wandering down the halls looking for a better bathroom. Smart. Um, so why, why we do this, who knows. But, uh, I mean, I, in that case, it was because it was of the drugs they were giving me. And the auto hallucinations were, were so vivid that um, I could actually hear my mom talking to me while she wasn't anywhere near the place. Now, when people say they hear voices, right, does that mean that they don't believe that the voice is coming from them or do they just hear their own thoughts? I've always been curious when someone says they have a voice telling them to commit suicide. Yeah. That's not their voice? I guess they... There's probably two different, there's different levels of it, right? Like there are people who don't, cannot differentiate and realize that those voices aren't real. And then there seem to be people who are like, I know I hear voices. I'm told they're not real. I am hearing them. Like when I was a kid, especially, I mean, it, it'll come back every once in a while, but I'll, I'll hear something that is similar to like voices speaking that like, garbled, talking, fast, very quick. But you can't tell what they are. And then it was really creepy because I heard, um, I saw a thing that was like, oh, people always wonder what schizophrenics are hearing. And then they played it. I'm like, that's what it sounds <laughs> oh, like. That's really weird. But I remember I uh, years ago I was in college and I was seeing a counselor and I made mention of that. And she's like, um, that's not normal. And I was like, no, I know what you're thinking. Like, I hear voices. I really don't. Actually... You know, my dad said that he had something similar when he was young. And it's, you know, it's a creative thought is very loud in your head. And she's like, schizophrenia runs in families. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> it's genetic. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> and then I called you that night. Hey, Dad, do we have schizophrenia? <laughs> When I was younger, I used to just hear this guy talking all the time. And then I realized I had a brother. 
<laughs> I wasn't alone in my room. <laughs> I have this imaginary friend. <laughs> yeah, I had an imaginary friend that used to have a bed next to mine in my bedroom. As an adult, I've heard voices a couple times that have been like really like messed up and like wired, but it was like it was not my own voice. It was like people. It was not like a crowd of people talking like behind me. But you're talking about <laughs> drugs, or you're talking uh, drugs and alcohol, or you're drugs talking about alcohol, sleepiness. Yeah. yeah, no, no, not sleepiness. Well, drug, yeah. yeah, drugs and alcohol. No, I'm talking about just like this is so in my weird. head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would have a voice talking to me, and then I would have a mantra to calm it down. And my mantra always used to be, "Hush, hush, keep it down now." Voices carry. <laughs> Keep, Keep it, it down, down now. now. I got in trouble for uh, singing in school, and I'm like, no, I'm just talking to this disbodied voice. Look how fucking so cute she was, too. And this creep. <laughs> I saw her perform this a couple years ago, and it was like so fucking good. good. So good. Where at? God, now I can't remember where it was. It was in the city. God, I can't remember what venue we're at. I was up in Western Mass, and like I was traveling through this town. And it was like, they had like a little arts theater there. And it said she was going to be there two days later. And I'm like, should we just stay? <laughs> and we were like, yeah, let's just stay and wait for that show. And we went in. It was sold out. Or I would have just stayed in a right. fucking town for two days to see her. <laughs> which is borderline stalking, I think. <laughs> um, hey, Marty. Marty, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys, how are you doing? Love the show. Long time, first time. Oh, great. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just listening uh, to you guys uh, talking about voices. I'm actually a psychiatrist, so I wanted to know if you guys had any questions about like how to differentiate and, and that kind of thing. Well, I literally think that I have a 24-hour, in my head, voice going, but it's mine. You know right. what I mean? Like, I've, and, not, yeah. I've never been weirded out by it, but, I, but I'm also... Uh, a gigantic daydream person and i've had a <laughs> i've had a daydream going my entire life yeah i remember uh, a friend of mine was talking about how he how people perceive thoughts right and he was saying you know it's not like you hear it's not like you're walking through your day and you hear your voice saying oh i should do this and i should do that Never it's just conceptual that. and then i'm like i think i hear my voice it's kind of a yeah. weird thing but you're like your thought is just appears in your where other people would think of planning mine is just pure escapism, pure, one hundred percent escapism. Is that crazy, Marty? Should I, should I be on a drug? No, no, that that's entirely normal. And one of the ways that you know that it's normal, you know, to have like if you're like the inner monologue guy or the yes. inner narrative uh, person, is that you know you look at the overall functionality of your life because schizophrenia is much more than you know voices. The most debilitating symptoms of schizophrenia are the difficulty putting together thoughts, the difficulty putting actions together, the difficulty functioning, right? Mm. So, that, so that someone who walks around and, you know, they have a radio show and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, pretty likely that you're just a high-functioning but creative person, you know? That's because bad. schizophrenic, <laughs> that's why, you know, so many of them end up like homeless and whatnot is because, you know, they, they can't put their thoughts together. The voices are a small part of schizophrenia, relatively speaking. Dude. Uh, I have a homeless buddy that comes looking for me at the stand and I see him like trying to take as much time to show interest in me. Like I'm like one of his best clients, I guess. So I'll go like, Hey, uh -huh. Perry, how's it going? I go, has it been busy for you tonight? And he's like, yeah. And then I'll go like this. Has it been busy for you tonight? <laughs> like he'll just try to interact with me yeah. and he's so sweet. <laughs> but like, I think to myself, Oh, I better, I could help him. But then I'm like, of course I can't. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of, yeah. I mean, he seems like he's functioning enough that he would have gotten help by now. You know? And he lives at the train yeah. station. Yeah, sometimes it's not just like a leg up. Like, yeah. you couldn't solve their problems with just money or even just employment sometimes. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, like, like when I take my kids to the city and, you know, they feel bad and they want to give you know money to all the homeless folks. You know, it's like what they you know, that's not what they need as much as like actual like programmatic help. You know, the main thing they need is is medication. Like there right. are plenty of things like depression or anxiety. These are things that you can either think your way through, talk your way through without medication or or take a med, you know, either way. But like schizophrenia, you can't really think your way through it biologically just the connections aren't being made, you know, mm -hmm. and like those guys need, you know, sort of supervised um, provision of their medication. That's the main thing they need. But it's like there were so many abuses in the old days uh, when, you know, we had institutionalization, you know, in the days of like girl interrupted and that kind of thing that now that has a very negative um, connotation in the public's mind, you know? So a lot of like pretty well in pretty well-meaning, well-intentioned homeless advocates who are against, you know, sort of some restrictive measures, that's unfortunately, you know, they need, you know, more sort of firm help than that. You know, it's, yeah, tough. it's, it's a hard question. It is. It's a very, very tough one. And this guy's such a sweetheart. I'd love to get him to stop here one day, but I don't know if that would even take him out of his regular thing. Because yeah, it seems like he's got a regular thing going on. Uh, I yeah. saw a thing the other day. A guy had had a, uh, a head injury and then became a savant. And he could take a piece of clay and he could just twist it and turn it until it looks like perfectly like a giraffe. And he's never wasn't able to do it before. And it's just that specific. Yes. It was on CBS Sunday morning. Wow. And the giraffe was beautiful, you know, and that's all he does all the time. What, yeah, now, that, what that could that be? Like, why would you, that stimulate? Why would an injury stimulate something so specific in your mind that you could do something that even is weirder than just saying, oh, and then he became a sculptor. Right. But that he has one almost blueprint in his mind that he's able to. Yeah. I feel like if I took a hammer and hit Kristen right in the right part of his head, <laughs> okay. he could become a piano player. I think we let's try. try. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think go. I could get you guys funding for that, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I always find the savant thing fascinating and any autism thing, I'll watch any show about yeah. autism because I do feel like it's some kind of next level shit coming yeah. down that we just don't understand yet. Like a different vibration. Yes. It always does seem like that. Yeah. Right, right. Well, you know, and, and I always think that if you go back to the history of the, like the initial history of psychiatry, mm -hmm. I always think it's pretty unfortunate that American psychiatry took more of a Freudian tur a turn than a Jungian turn. I agree. Because, you know, Jung, Jung was far more, you know, receptive to that kind of thing. And, and I also think, um, you know, that, you know, like over the years when you said on the show that like when you've been in the room when a death has happened or when or when a birth yeah. has happened, that like there's something there you don't, you know, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. It's really unfortunate that psychiatry has gone down these like very, very sort of deterministic roads that miss kind of like the beauty of existence, you know? Yeah, I think it's because of this. Like you even said oh, to me, like, oh, that's normal. So we want normal instead of extraordinary because I've been with so many songwriters who just basically explain that they hear a tune in their head and write it down. And people who say like the production will become to them before the melody or yeah. the lyric. I mean, these things are, are strange. And yet, because they're, we find value in them, we're like, okay, that's great. Yeah. But that's the thing. We place the value on yeah. something. I mean, at that point, how many ideas are you come up with that are almost like a waking dream? And yes. then you take credit for that, which is strange because it doesn't right. feel like you're in control of that thing. Yeah. Even your ideas. If you have a great idea, it it appears in your head. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's, it doesn't feel so literal where you're working out the problems of something and then you solve it. Right. Sometimes. It, Eureka. Yeah. It That's arrives. They, yeah. Then that thing of just like the light bulb goes off. We try to come up with the explanations for something that, you know, for all we know, it's spiritual or something else. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And if you actually look at like some of the work that was done on like world mythology and world myth, you know, like the Joseph Campbell stuff, you know, like the many faces of God and, you yeah. know, these like these like societal archetypes, you know, where like every civilization has, you know, a flood, you know, a sacrificial hero, you, you know, a fertility, you know, kind of narrative. You know, it's like beyond just even on the individual level, there are these common threads, you know, like culturally as well. You know, well, even now, has, why know. is the whole world running this 
superhero comic book model. Like, why did, I mean, these, th- we're making movie, almost a movie a week about this. Yeah. And people are showing up. So what does that mean? What, what kind of nourishment are they getting from that? You know, it's non-human yeah. Yeah. almost. Yeah. Well, well, you know, what happens is like, like we, we are animals who seek meaning, right? Mm-hmm. So, so biologically we're animals, but we're animals who are, who are aware of our own consciousness and we seek meaning. And, you know, in society, as you turn something over, you have to find something to replace it. And, you, you know, that's why, you know, certain things sort of never go away. You, you know, the idea that, you know, people need something to believe in. So it's like, you know, as society cycles through, like, you know, atheism or science or what have you. It's like none of these things, you know, have proven thus far to be like sufficiently nourishing, as, as you're saying, you know. Right. So, it's, so it's like what, what kind of themes are nourishing? Well, heroes are, are nourishing, you know. Like, you know, comic book heroes specifically versus grander heroes, probably not, you know. But if you look at the history of the world, you know, that's kind of like the turnover of cultures is cultures that are driven by, you know, kind of belief and meaning, you know, topple the ones that cease to be, you know. But right the now we meaning. seem to be in this iron, iron ran type thing, right, of the yeah. this Superman. And at the same time, you see Russia is running on a strong man. China's running on a strong man. And even the United States, this is the closest we had to a guy who's just like, I am telling you, I am the dude. And anyone who's up again, you know what I mean? Like the one thing about yeah. Trump is he's so out front with that. Yeah. You know? And people are digging yeah. it to a yeah. certain extent. And that's always like, it's easy to look in retrospect for some reason um, in history when you see a personality like that rise to power where they're making it about themselves and they're saying, look, you don't have to worry. You don't have to do the thinking. I'll do the thinking. Yeah. I'm the best person for the job. And for some reason, it's easier for us to go, look how bad that seemed. But somehow we're in that moment and we're like, yeah, yeah this it. is weird. Yeah. Yeah. So the people who are are comfortable with it are comfortable and the people who aren't are just like, I guess I have no control over this. But people are also saying, I'm not even that crazy about democracy. I mean, we've been saying for a while, doesn't matter who you you bring in. And now maybe that's not true. Maybe we yeah. see there is a guy, you know what I mean, who's able to say, I'm bigger than the history of this country, you know? Yeah, and I don't even think that that, you know, globally, I don't even think that that's run its course yet. Because yeah. in a number of the European countries, there are, you know, these populist movements that, you know, haven't captured, you know, power yet. But, you know, at, at, at a certain point, it's it's not so far off to see it happening, you know. So I don't even think we've peaked. No, know, I don't think so either. Yet. I, yeah. I think there's a few more coming, actually. Yeah, you know? I do. Yeah. But, yeah. but but here you see the planet all kind of oddly going in the same direction. You know what I mean? Like everybody across the board seems to be going in this direction. All right, uh, Marty, you're going to be my Jungian connection for now on, right, buddy? <laughs> Awesome. Feel free. I have loved you guys for years. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Take care. Peace. All right. You bet. Be well, guys. Bye, Gail. Bye, Chris. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Whoa. Why are you weird. being weird? I'm not being weird. No, you were weird when you did that. Why are you giving me a break? Oh, we should take a quick break because we only broke uh, once today. Yeah. Also, Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith are coming. Talk about a strong man. Louis J. Gomez. Uh, Louis and Dave co headlining at Nick's Comedy Stop. In Boston this Friday and Saturday, Nick's Comedy Stop <laughs> for all the jokes of Legion of Skanks. <laughs> um, Legion of Skanks and Friends is happening at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, California. Home of the Doors, March 29th, with Dan Soder and Doug Benson. Skank Fest, July uh, 14th and 15th in Brooklyn Bazaar in Greenpoint. Go to skankfestnyc.com. We'll break back Bennington. Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith are in studio. Louis and Dave are co headlining at Nick's Comedy Stop in Boston this Friday and Saturday. Nick'sComedyStop.com for tickets. Belizea Skanks and Friends Live is happening Thursday, March 29th at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles with Dan Soder and Doug Benson. The That's com- fun. The ComedyStore.com for tickets. Mm. And Skank Fest is happening July 14th and 15th at Brooklyn Bazaar in Unbelievable. Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Pre-sale tickets go on sale April 2nd at SkankFestNYC.com. You know, when we first met the Skanks, we're like, oh, they're great. Yeah. Now they're Black Panther. 
You know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. that big. Mm. They're as big as Black Panther. Oh, I thought you were implying that we're fighting for social change. <laughs> yes, I thought, you, but you're changing it back from the Black Panther way. <laughs> we're, we're more like taking things back to segregation days. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you're here, Dave, because unlike, and no offense, Lois, unlike most comics, you could talk about social issues. Right. And we're wondering why, at the same time that we have these superhero movies, right, there's also the strongman has returned to world politics. And I don't even know if we've had that since, like, Mussolini and, and Hitler, but Putin is... Not only big there, but he's popular with his own people. The guy in China. Mm, I love poutine. And Montreal. Yeah, Montreal. It's delicious. Um, were you there for New Faces or no? A few years ago. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I was still too old at that point to be there for New Faces. Louis, old Faces. The only bald guy on New Faces. <laughs> I was like. But also, Donald Trump is kind of a strong man. Is there something running through these times? Yeah, that's, we, an, yeah. that's an interesting thing, right? Like it's like in the fifties, it'd be like Superman and right. Eisenhower. Yeah, and now we're returning back to our greatness. Yeah, he's keeping his promise. Um, and think- we are great again. Yeah. But for a while, didn't I didn't know whether he was going to make it, but he did. Do you guys feel greater? I, I never do. really felt like I ever lost my greatness. Yeah, you always felt like you had it. I've been fucking crushing it the whole time <laughs> throughout the Obama administration. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. true. Throughout yeah. fucking but Bush not number everybody one was. and number two. Um, the Clinton years, you felt like you were... It was, you, my, it was my valley. Yeah, yeah. There's no, <laughs> you know, it wasn't my best time, but, you know, to be honest with you, yeah, I have been, I've been doing pretty good. So yeah. Trump is restoring other people's confidence you know, in themselves. That's all it is. It's psychological because we're, yeah. we're all great. We're Americans. I, I judge a president by how high our podcast download numbers are. <laughs> so, so far, Trump's doing a little Getting bit better, better than Obama. Mm-hmm. Better all the time. George Bush wasn't doing so great. Clinton didn't even have podcasts <laughs> out. So true. That guy, he deserved to get impeached. <laughs> yeah. He was too busy with his interns mm. than anything else. But we have made podcasting great again. Um, and really, Trump communicates like a podcaster. I think he's... You know, simple, yeah. quick. He doesn't have any gray areas. Reaches He'll say, people, no middleman. Oh, yeah, there's no middleman. <laughs> and he'll also say, this is easy. We can take care of this in no time at all. <laughs> and he's harder on the people that work for him than, than on the other side. So the, like, the real people who get abused by Trump are the people that he's hired, the Chris Stanley's, the Vito's <laughs> of his life, you know? <laughs> he does an amazing job at, like, just destroying people or praising them. He's like yeah. an abusive father. You right. Know? Like, it's, it's always like, if you do what he says, you're like, he's like, he's terrific, and he's the greatest yeah. guy in the world. Yeah. And then if you don't, he's got a, a nickname for you. Yeah. And you're just going to be humiliated. And he's so, a faggot. Yeah, I don't know if he's ever said, he said that. that. That would be great if he We're definitely did. <laughs> this guy's a real queer. <laughs> Look at Wait, little that Marco. That is phenomenal. Yeah. It's really good. Like I'm Trump trying to jump. In, I'm trying to jump in with Dave. Dave yeah. threw it. You saw the way he threw it in, like yeah. it was a fight, like he wasn't doing a Trump impression. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely did. But you do it like he, he's a queer. He's a queer. Yeah, that's, that's it's kind of like I'm Donald Trump. It's, it's kind of your Bobby Kelly, that. but it's a little mixed with. So you know, it's a bad impression when you have to say, "Hi, I'm Donald Trump." Chris, are you working on a new impression, too? I know you had something brewing. Uh, yeah, I was doing like a, a, a Tom Ford impression. A Tom Ford, Tom. the designer? No, the, the crack smoking mayor. His name was Rob. Tom Ford. Rob, 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 Ford. Rob. Rob. Tom God, Ford stupid. is the gay man who <laughs> yeah. makes lovely suits for men. And I was very interested I in this impression. I wanted to hear your Tom Ford. <laughs> because, I really you know, did too. He disp- he's gay, but he's quite masculine. Yeah, I was like, this is going to be very, uh, this is going to be deep. Well, you know... Uh, Dave Smith kind of has the beard, a Tom Ford beard. He'd always, mm-hmm. keep, you know, it's like it seems like it's coming on, but what yeah. do you get? You, you crop it's that like, down that way. I like the way it looks, but I keep yeah. getting jizz stuck in it. Okay, that's a problem <laughs> <laughs> for some people, right, Vito? <laughs> Vito, you're back into your barrette days of pulling your hair back like that? S- some days I just want my hair back, and some yeah. days I like to let it flow. Now, what is that, like a child's barrette that you put up there? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sweat wicking headband. Uh-huh. I get them on Amazon for eight dollars a pop. I, I don't know is, why he went back into it. Yeah, is the waistband from our preschoolers' pants? <laughs> <laughs> the, he takes a trophy after yeah. every oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> now Ari Shafir has already made the announcement. Skankfest is ah, coming back. He did. Thank you, Ari. Now uh, I know that you've got some plans, but you said 
you like to surprise people. You were telling me the other night, Lois. I'm no longer, we're no longer announcing anything to even our close friends because then somebody's going to pull an Ari Shafir mm-hmm. and take our moment and take our, our moment to announce it to the world. Lewis has to crack down on the leaks within this administration. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's the same leak. So it's just Ari. Yeah, because how many people you think knew, but only Ari thought it would be funny to announce first? Um, yeah, a lot of people knew. Everyone that we've asked to do the festival so far, but then yeah. Ari, here's the best part of all of it. Ari texted Christine first. Christine's one of the producers of the Comedy Festival, producer of the Bonfire here on Sirius XM. And Christine <laughs> blows Jay. Yeah. So he, uh, that's we all know she, what she does. So does that, Soder. That's how we all got our jobs, actually, to be honest. <laughs> um, but he texted her first, being like, oh, I'm going to tweet it out just to piss Lewis off. Mm-hmm. And then she texted him back, oh my God, please, Ari, please don't do that. And then she showed me that she begged him. And I was like, oh, it's so much better now that you begged him. Yes, right. Yeah, if she didn't beg him first, it was just like a, a whatever. But he yeah. really knew that he hurt multiple people. So you think if she would have just said, ha ha. Or yeah. just like, oh, that'd be funny. Well, that's whatever. what solidified his idea. Yeah. And look, here's the truth. You know, Ari is a scumbag Jew, and he will burn in the fiery pits of hell for all of eternity. You know, that's just not true, even if you're a Christian. They are the chosen people. Doesn't matter what they do. I heard that from a born-again Christian. Yeah. The Jews are chosen. They get a free pass. And I go, why didn't you then just become a Jew? If that's the thing, yeah. that's the seems, best way to go. Yeah, seems like you should convert. Because yeah. they have to accept you. It's not simply, you see, Christians walk around going like, oh my God, door to door, hey, be one of yeah. us. Jews are like, no, are you fucking crazy? I know. You have to go through the whole, the whole process. Well, even if you say to a Jew, how do I become a Jew? They're like, you don't want to do that. You don't yeah, want to. It's a bit much. That. Yeah. You have to come back a few times and prove. I saw that episode of Sex in the City. So you have to come back a few times and prove how, how, prove how bad you want it. I believe I, it's three I, times. Yeah, I do you have to be appreciate turned away. It. That they don't want you, though. Like, other, you know, there are a lot of other religions that are trying to convert you. Why would we want you like, if we already know we're better than you? Right. I think that's great. Not, we don't need to prove a point. You're, well, even your God was a Jew. Well, yeah, mm. but why are Christians so needy? Really needy. Fucking embarrassingly needy. Like, going mm. to other countries, begging yeah. people. That's um, obnoxious. Yeah, that, it's like, it's like that, nobody wants to be at that party. You know, if you're going out and it's like, oh, please come to my party. It's going to be really cool. You're like, all right, dude, we get it. All right. But then the party where the, you know, the Jews are like, no, you're not allowed in this party. Yeah. That's That's like the long line. Yeah, dude, you're going to fucking. And the Muslims are like, go have your party over there. But if you draw Muhammad, we're going to blow you up. Yes. Which seems reasonable. (laughs) What I do is if I, I, and I do a lot of Muhammad drawings, but I do it on flash paper (laughs) so I can just quickly get rid of it. It's fun. It's a fun drawing. Sometimes I'll just have him jerking it off for fingering his ass. (laughs) (laughs) You You do it on an etch a sketch. I wish I was that good at etch a sketch. But there's an Ari Shafir mentality. He's like, I wasn't going to draw Muhammad, but now that that you're mentioning it, I feel like I should. The whole Bennington staff had to go into hiding after this episode. <laughs> I don't think they would be mad at us. I think they would l- look at us like, yeah, these guys are just fucking around. Now, it is kind of like a challenge to draw the best Muhammad cartoon mm-hmm. that even the Muslims would go like, that is pretty that clever. That is like, kind of how he would look. Well, if, like, <laughs> if, if you just simply draw a stick figure and say, that's Muhammad, do they blow you up? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. See, I feel like that's silly. No, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe they've never heard that perspective before. <laughs> you, you, you are right, Lois. It's si- they're it acting silly over there. Right. You mean silly faces? Yeah. yeah. You know, here's the thing. I see if it's a fucking full fledged, good, like you know, big beard good on point. a fucking yeah. flying carpet. You know, yeah. you rub a lamp or whatever. That you, that's fine. But a shitty drawing of a sick figure, we could just point at it and say that's Muhammad. That's stupid. Now, this isn't a visual medium. What about just that? Just him describing it. Like he's yeah, just it sounds like through. if you're describing it. Or if I just said. You painted a picture with words. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's I thought you said this. Lewis has a bit of a Muhammad on his shirt, but he has him as a, as an ape. Oh, racist. He's, he's, <laughs> Not cool. I wear Come an on. evil Knievel uh, outfit. He said it's Muhammad. This is, a, this is his terrorism helmet to protect him. Did you see this guy in, in Austin? You know, then we need to get this done before Moon Tower. What happened? Today. He's a, we got a mad bomber down there, mm-hmm. but today he took it up to a trip wire. Yeah, and that makes me feel like that hasn't been used since what Vietnam? No, there's no one there wasn't used. a trip wire, and you know, I mean, we're, we're into those other type of yeah. things where you step on yeah, it. It's jungle warfare, is a trip yes, wire. thank you. Jungle warfare, <laughs> trip, is- trip wire is the most hilarious bomb. 
Because first you trip a guy. Yeah. And right. like, so <laughs> stupid. You fall face it. first really and then blow stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah! Everyone laughs at him. Yeah. <laughs> Tripwire. It was like when you uh, would pull somebody's chair out in school and then they actually got hurt. <laughs> but you, then then one turns on you and you're like, oh, all the people that are laughing now think that I'm a bad person because <laughs> he can't take care of his hip bone. Yeah. <laughs> what type of animal would pull the chair out from another human being? Wait, right. did you do it? No. Okay. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> Chris, we got to plug these guys. They're going to Boston. They're co-headlining, which I don't know how you do that. Somebody's got to close. It, it, it's, it's kind of like when two people are tired of featuring. Mm-hmm. They get together and they co-headline. <laughs> oh, they, right. have a, they have a more famous comic closing the show. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. well, we're co we're co You're co-headlining. We're yeah. co-headlining. And then there's a clo- closing. And then Anthony Jeselnik is headlining, headlining. <laughs> <laughs> Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith are in studio. Louis and Dave are co-headlining at Nick's Comedy Stop in Boston this Friday and Saturday. Nick'sComedyStop.com for tickets. And Legion of Skanks and Friends Live is happening Thursday, March 29th at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles with Dan Soder and Doug Benson. No Doug Benson on that, by the way. Doug Benson can't do it. Joey Diaz is on it, though. Da- Better. <laughs> 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 That's Dan Soder and Joey Diaz. I'm sorry, what was that? The internal thoughts of every listener? No, stop it. They're both great. <laughs> TheComedyStore.com for tickets and Skankfest. He is nice. That's happening July 14th Take and your 15th. time saying it, all right? It's nice. Skankfest. I was talking over yeah. you. I don't want to start over. Skankfest. It's happening July 14th and 15th. Check AriShafir.com for updates. <laughs> uh, SkankfestNYC.com for pre-sale tickets. Yeah. Could you actually read the whole thing? It's www. Yeah. HTTP forward slash. I tried to do it without the W. It was very hard. <laughs> I don't even know what the HTTP stands for. I'm not sure either. Oh. But that's how you just used to type it like in the 90s. No, I remember. Mm-hmm. I remember pre-search engines, how hard it was to find anything. <laughs> no, it was impossible. Now I'm, just, I'm still using the same one, Ask Jeeves. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's like a little butler help show. It's so funny because if you ever, I, I never go to anything without social media anywhere, anymore. Like it's always like I start with Twitter and then I'll click on a link that brings me to another website. But I don't remember the last time I just typed in a website, website. Besides you porn. never went to like NewYorkPost.com or ESPN. Mm. No, I'll do CNN to find like uh, podcast stories once in a while. So I'm a that's that's why you that's go to a, CNN. That's what it's good for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like that's a rare find. <laughs> if they're going to go, there's a new podcast. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. I go, I go to CNN to listen to the latest Rogan experience. <laughs> no, I mean, I go to CNN to find stories for my podcast to talk about. Oh, oh okay. Like new okay, stories. Sorry. All right. That I didn't know that like you... breaking podcast news. I didn't know that. I can't every, picture you I've been checking press. every day for four years. <laughs> they never have anything. <laughs> I thought the same exact thing. I did. Now, you do prep for skanks no not for skanks for a real ass <laughs> podcast and believe you me my yeah the podcast i do a lot of prep i can't picture you i take the hiv medication beforehand yeah. we do a <laughs> lot of freaky shit on those shows i know yeah i know skanks is still pushing the envelope we do not me i'm pulling the envelope in around me no mm-hmm. i want the envelopes more less and less oh, come on dude you yeah. get a fucking safe cushy job here in the corporate world <laughs> too cushy yeah you know it's nice um a lot no one ever gets fired from this gig, <laughs> except all my other friends besides you. Yeah. Well, sometimes though, this thing is so comfortable that I'll look at the news and see a tragedy and just laugh at them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's easy. It's just laughing and looking down at that, people. That may not be job stability as much as just being a sociopath. <laughs> no, I think when you're too far above things. You know what I mean? Like, and this is, I had this theory. One time I was at Daytona Beach, and I'm in a... I'm in a place that are like 23 stories up overlooking the beach. And, you know, they drive on the beach there. And I saw someone pull their car in and run over a person and get stuck on them. And I thought at the point at the time, wow, if I was down there, I'd be freaking out because I saw people (laughs) trying to help. But I literally felt nothing. The distance. Yeah, Yeah, the distance. Now, who who else's view is that? God's. God looks down mm-hmm. and feels he can see famine, war, never and you, steps in. Yeah, true. well, you're too high up. I I, mm. I I weirdly agree with that. I also think if there's a window between you, because if I was if I watched somebody in the street get hit by a car, <laughs> right. it would bother me. But if I was inside of Equinox enjoying a smoothie and then I looked out at somebody hit by a car, yeah. I would That's feel like it's a good, good. movie. I, was, I, I actually have a specific one that I remember, and you were there for as yeah. well. Is that we were looking out. Across the water towards the FDR, 
and a car caught on fire and yeah. it was a massive fire yes. and there was just panic and fear and is there someone trapped in and we're like cool that's weird <laughs> yeah. look at how much smoke and we were, and we were up so high. far away we're and high, high. Oh, I, I had actually kind of a similar story yeah. uh, was, I set a car on fire but then I went inside and I was like <laughs> that's cool that I'm good that. now but let's suppose I was feeling guilty while yeah, I was still were, outside let's right. suppose we, we looked over at Vito and someone was stabbing <laughs> <laughs> but we couldn't hear we'd feel different if someone came in and started stabbing Chris. They could stab yeah. him then. <laughs> it's splatter, like, at least. Stop stabbing him. Put him there. I'll be like, is Vito getting stabbed? That can't be real. <laughs> Even Chris, he's across a desk from me. Yeah. I'm trying to be okay with that. If they came over to you, I'd start getting right. concerned. Right. By the time they got to Gail, I'd be like, this is yeah. not, this is the problem. objects are in between us? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, just imagine that thing of if you had mass starvation outside of your door, people in your street, that would be crazy. But by the time it gets to Africa, you just see it on TV and you're like, what else is on? Yeah. You know, like, Ooh, yeah. that's sad. Even yeah. where, there that's could be a school sad. shooting in Canada and it doesn't bother me. And it's just Canada. It really is. It's so weird that that imaginary line, it yeah. genuinely does something to me psychologically. Like if it's in the United States, it affects me so much more than anywhere else. Well, I don't. I, I'll get upset over mass shootings in Canada, but not Mexico. No, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that border's different. Yeah, that border's a lot yeah. different. That's just a my sympathy, average day at school in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. My or sympathy Florida. only travels up like heat. <laughs> 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 I don't know what it is, but if there's like a tragedy in Canada or America or, you know, Europe... Right. Then I kind of care about it. Oh, here we yeah, go. Australia, Australia Sweden. 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 I care yeah, Sweden. more about Sweden. Those weirdly. good people in Sweden. Parts yeah. of yeah. South Denmark. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much the Trevor Noah part of South Africa, but other parts. Uh, sure. <laughs> there is something fucked up about the human condition. But uh, people think you meant when they say like humanity, they mean it. As a positive thing, but I don't know why they do. Yeah, you know. And there is something weird about when you see sameness in yourself or in your family, and then you see a story, and you're like, "That's like my family," or "That's right. like my kid," and that affects you more. Like I remember, everyone was so upset because Obama had said about Tr Trayvon Martin, "Like I don't have a son, but if I did have a son, he'd look like Trayvon Martin, and yeah. it's significant to me." And everyone's like, "Oh, so you don't care when white kids get shot?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but you're the same. Everybody feels that way. Everybody yeah. has that reaction." Also, he, the kid would look half white. <laughs> yeah, well, Trayvon was it? You know, the darkest. Kid yeah, he wasn't seen. super. He didn't dark. look like he was like Tracy Morgan's kid. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great though if uh, <laughs> if if Trump just went the opposite way and they were yeah. like, "How come you don't care about these people in Puerto Rico?" He's like, "None of them look like me." Right. I don't know. But he doesn't even care about his own kids. Like yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, he lets his daughter bang a Jew. Mm. Sorry. But she's on top. He did mention that. He goes, yes, but she's on top all the time. I mean, he doesn't look like he's that upset that his his son or his son-in-law got drug into his shit. You know, no. he doesn't seem to have regret about like, oh my god. I don't my think family they live in in a world of like anything really affects them like that. I think it's like, oh, their lawyer has to be bothered with it, and they live fucking right. their lives like kings. Yeah. You know, how much is it really bothering Trump like that type of shit? Like, but I don't think that they're overly happy people. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of feel no, like Melania has be. been stuck for the past year. I don't know if Trump Botox. is. Yeah. She's not. She's not happy for yeah. sure. Yeah. And we know uh, Trump Jr.'s wife wasn't. I mean, I wouldn't wish that life on anybody. You know what I mean? It seems like a nightmare. Yeah. Well, I mean, me. to become like a billionaire and to, you know, to, to be that successful and to be that obsessed with business and making money, you know, it's just like a game. I look at like the presidency to Trump is just like he's playing a different board game that day and yeah. becoming a billionaire and becoming that successful was him kind of like beating that game. And he's like, all right, dude, time to fucking go and play this. And when you look at it that way, it's not really about being a leader or being the president. It's just kind of about being successful. Um, you know, it's it's sort of interesting, and you you I, I kind of appreciate it in a weird way. It's it's a numbers game more than it really anything. is. Like he goes, I've got more numbers than the other, yeah. the other guy. Yeah. yeah, it's like this thrill of conquest, like yeah. just taking shit over, and then he's playing risk, awesome but with real it. countries. It's yeah. like like the first paragraph of the Art of the Deal, 
That's what he I says. Love it. I love that book. He, the first thing he's like, I don't do this for the money. If I have all the money I could ever spend, like, I could I could just stop and spend money. He's like, for me, it's all about doing big deals, building big buildings, do like taking over. I think yeah. Trump gets off on the fact that he just walked into someone else's field and beat all of them at it. Yeah. Like, you know. So what do you think is next for him after this? Is there anything reinstating slavery? No, but I mean, after he leaves, everybody leaves. Most people just kind of fade off. He's I like don't think 75. Trump's, he's going to die soon. I yeah, mean, but I don't. You know, I don't think Trump's going to leave. So. He's dying in office. He's going to. He'll make himself king before this thing is over. I think he's the type of guy that tries to tries to get more than two terms out of it. You can see it. He was joking yeah. about that a few weeks ago. Yeah. Well, right. He's talking about the Chinese president yeah. is going to be president for life, and he's like, "Not such a bad idea." Yeah. You know? But again, that goes back to that strongman superhero thing. Yeah. Like, there's only one. That can lead us. Don't, and I, don't I, worry about it. Don't think about it. I can take care of it. Right. I'm the best person for this job. I stopped, um, like, I, I refuse to write anything about politics and social media. And on my podcast, I won't talk about it at all. I made Same with me. I, I literally <laughs> won't. And it, I'm a happier person. And the truth is, it doesn't affect me in any way. We could, we could all just lead our lives and live our lives normally. Whatever, whoever's in office, in my opinion, doesn't, isn't going to affect your bottom line as, as an American living in this country. I think you can just be as successful and as happy as you want to be. And you can let it impede and let it affect you, or you cannot. And I think the people that are successful, well, they don't give a fuck who's in office. They're going to go be successful. Yeah, but don't you think people, like policies affect real people? To a certain degree, but it's cards that you can either play or you don't play. And I almost feel like people can be obsessed with those cards and and or you you know and say, oh fuck, I don't have the right cards. Or you can still just try to win the game. I'm the type of person that's just going to try to win the game. Yeah, but you're saying if the rules of the game change, they change, and then you start playing. You still, but they're the changing. Yeah. I kind of feel that way. I, I just feel like we don't know enough as a society, and we can't truly really affect it on the on an individual human level. I feel like there's not many people that are doing anything to truly affect it, and people like to pat themselves on the back and pretend that they're doing something to affect it. Hi, dude, I'm right here. Yeah, he is. So, guys, tune into part of the problem twice a week on the Gas Digital Network. Please stop kicking me. I'm he, just sitting next to thing. an eight year old child. <laughs> this is easier for you, Lois. <laughs> Literally, like. Yeah, I know. He's just. Yeah, it was on a roll. But it's easier for you, Lois, because you've never paid taxes. Everyone else. <laughs> 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 well, it's like, how could the government possibly affect your bottom line? Oh. I guess, I guess you've been that. paid under the table for the past 14 years. Yeah. But you know what I do agree with Lewis on is you see this all the time where it's like people try to make politics their life. And I'll yeah. see these like tweets that where like people are just like, you know, like whatever. It's like, I miss I miss Obama or something. It's yeah. like, miss Obama. Like, is this this isn't a relationship in your right. life? Like, you know, but, but uh, look at other places we do that, like with sports, like we uh -huh. act like. If the Giants are in the shitter, people are depressed. And when the Giants win the Super Bowl, people in the city feel better. Yeah. Dude, I remember me and Lewis were at a bar once. This is like, when, whenever the last time the Mets were in the World Series, so this is years ago. Oh, yeah, it was like, like what was that? Two, when was it? 2015. 2015. Okay, so it was like three years ago. I forgot that. And, uh... And we were just in this bar, and it happened to be one of the World Series games. Me and Lewis don't really give a shit about baseball. But we were just sitting there drinking, and then as they, as the fans were coming down, Lewis, in classic Gomez fashion, just thought it would be hilarious to just yell, Mets suck. So he just starts yelling, Mets suck! It's like eight dudes Everyone, wearing Mets shirts. Yeah. And they're all walking down, and dude, the way these people react, they're like, they're too awesome. Well, they just right won. Away. They yeah. just won. Yeah, they just won a World Series game. And Lewis is like, Mets suck, and, and they just start projecting this shit. Like, right away, they're like, yeah, it's because you're a Yankees fan, yeah. and Yankees fans are always butthurt when the Mets are doing well. And I was like, nah, Yankees suck too. <laughs> and then they started getting nosebleeds. They didn't know how to handle yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. V Vito would have been fighting you. He's a I'm guy sure. who lives and dies with the Mets, and when the Mets lost that series, Vito, you were in a depression around here. Yeah, I, I got into a fight at one of the games because somebody was talking shit to me as I left the stadium, and I had You're to, too amped up at a game. That does yeah. happen. And I, I had to run away from the cops on Halloween night because I fucking I knocked a guy out. And I, Wait, you're telling me you successfully ran away from the cops? Well, <laughs> they were, busy get better they were too busy laughing their asses yeah. off watching him run. Like the knocked out part, we would believe, but the... But the I don't know, I, I can't picture you punching somebody. I would have believed that you took the cops' guns and shot them to death and walked away before you ran away from those cops. The guy did the, like, the chest bump thing and like sized yeah. up on me, and then I just fucking hit him, because I was like, you're not going to... Let me stand up and show me your, your punch, because I don't see you as a violent guy. I, it's, it was in the heat of the moment.
So like so in Asia, like, a, like, like this? what Asia sang on a vest. Yeah, he chested up, <laughs> yeah. and then I just fucking like came up, and that's I just slow. <laughs> that's with that because Let me where see were the you, real punch. Were you hitting up? Did you yeah, find a giant. Yeah, it was a. It, it was, was a the guy. Ch- was it was a child that was being carried by their dad. I show us the punch. What are you like? All right, don't hit any. So first you chest bump. First you go just like tits to tits, just slow motion hot, and then and then I backed up, and then I just. I can't get, but then I came up. You're not doing it. I, Did I, you do it? Was it, a, How was long it an uppercut? How wind up? What yeah. are you, 1930s punch? Like one fighter. of these? <laughs> yeah, I, I fucking wound up and I punched him in the fucking mouth. But it's so like, small. Oh, you did a hot eye you can. or yeah. under his chin? You catch him under his chin? Yeah. Then I fucking ran away and oh, then. No. So I what got, happened to him? Did he fall down? No, went, he's... he went down on the floor. Flat out, he died. He went down on the floor. I ran away, and then I got grabbed by a Kansas. Well, first the Mets home run apple. I jumped on top of it. They thought I... you were him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ran on top of that, and then I almost went into the Mets post game thing. What did you end up hitting, Mister Met? No, is I, that who you knocked out? Beat up I, Keith Hernandez. I ran back down, and then a Kansas City Royals fan grabbed me, and I was like, "Oh, I don't want to get arrested for punching two people." So then I'm on the floor. By the way, it's the same. You get arrested for punching one or punching two, dude. Yeah, That's what's the difference? Yeah. Who gives a shit? I didn't know. So the I was, cops I was, aren't going to be like, we gave you a freebie. Yeah. I was freaked out. So Suddenly you're Patrick Swayze going from town to town. <laughs> <laughs> knocking people I know who this you is, are. Is this the plot of the movie Warriors? <laughs> oh, God, I wish. So I'm on the floor, and then all of a sudden somebody starts punching me in the head. And you're blowing and I him? look up. <laughs> No, <laughs> I look up. Works. The guy I hit is just pouring blood out. Oh, stop it! No, this I is swear to God, this just kind of reminds me of like you know, when like kids would be like hanging out skateboarding, and then there would be like some kid who showed up, and be like, "Yeah, I could do that," and like I used to do this trick. It was like Teddy. They're like, "Cool, do it." And they're like, "Whatever," and they walk away. I don't buy one down. word of this story. I, no, I, I, guys, somebody, you guys are all fucking happy. ruining this. I want to hear the rest of the story. So you got bit by a radioactive spider. <laughs> <laughs> Did your aunt know? Well, you have to keep it from her. <laughs> so who was it? Your girlfriend that lives in Vermont that you only see twice yeah, I don't know why it's so funny, fucking oh, funny that, that I punched somebody it. in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm starting to believe it. Wait. Why is he getting so angry? I don't that? know. One day in the street, he tried to beat me up. Because <laughs> I just gave him some shit. I was, I'll ball. tell you this. He had zero to 60 anger, and it was so crazy, and it was like so embarrassing. Wait, it was you like, try to fight him for real? Yeah. yeah the yeah. two of them were being so ridiculous, and I was so embarrassed. It was Jen's first fucking day, pretty much. And these two were like two silverbacks in the street, and I was standing between them. Racism. <laughs> He's so an Italian so already. Racist. Just tap there. I mean, people have only been out of the trees for was... 50 years. I mean, they were like hitting stuff. And like, got really angry, though. He couldn't control you... himself. He got angry yeah. that we questioned him yeah. punching now, a guy. What did you yell at Lewis? I couldn't even understand you. You fucking blurted it. I said, I don't know why it's so fucking funny that I punched somebody in the face. <laughs> no, it's not funny. No, it's not funny that you punched somebody in the face. It's funny that you would bring this lie to a national show like this. <laughs> it's so not true. He he looked up. The end of the story is ten minutes later after he went on a wild goose chase around yeah. the fucking stadium. No, it wasn't a wild fucking goose chase. I ran straight. <laughs> I ran fucking straight. It was an apple, Lewis. It was a giant apple. Oh, there's not a fucking apple outside City Field. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked up and the guy was pouring. Blood. This was a scene from the movie Fight Club. We I all saw the movie. somebody in the mouth and they bled out of their fucking face. Look at my head. I have a fucking giant hand. He wanted to do, destroy <laughs> something beautiful. Man. That was his thing. Chris, you could not fucking Chris, I'd love to see you in a fight. Uh-huh. I'd love to see you in a fight. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look at Vito. Uh-huh. He weighs a lot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Dude, I, have you seen his hands? Yeah. They're huge. Yeah. No, I'm sure you could end up killing a child one day <laughs> just for no apparent reason. Oh, shit. Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith are in the oh studio. No, 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 don't tell him where I am. I don't want Vito to show up and fuck me up. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be in Boston. Louis and Dave are co-headlining at Nick's Comedy Stop in Boston this Friday and Saturday. Nick'sComedyStop.com for tickets. Leads you to Skanks and Friends Lives happening Thursday, March 29th at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles with Dan Soder and Joey Diaz. TheComedyStore.com for tickets. And Skank Fest is Way happening. Make that change. All right. Skank Fest is happening <laughs> July 14th and 15th at Brooklyn Bazaar in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. SkankFestNYC.com for pre-sale tickets. Last year's Gang Fest was so great, but now do you feel the pressure? You got to top it? Uh, I think we've already topped it. When you when you look at who we have booked and what yeah. we have planned already, I mean, last year we had Gaffigan, we had Audie Lang, 
Uh, we had Burke Kreischer, Ari Shafir. He won't be um, back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, out. By the way, congratulations to Burke Kreischer. Without any training, ran a marathon. Incredible. Went, ran a oh, marathon. Did he, I he saw he was going to do that. Did yeah, he actually he, do it? Yeah, yeah. He did, yeah. Give him a call, Chris, if you can get a hold of him. But he didn't. Tra- he, he put on his Instagram that he didn't train at all. It took him five and a half hours. Is that uh, what's the average time for a marathon? Uh, two hours. No. Is, what is it really? It's what the guys that are at the best are doing. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? So he came in. They had been home and watched Black Panther. Mm-hmm. And then by the, he was still <laughs> running. <laughs> but I mean, it's amazing that he no. ran for five hours. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy that you could keep moving. I'm having stay. Chris right now. Chris is training for the last three months. We're going to have him run 100 yards. <laughs> and where are we at now? 60? We're, no, 50. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I vomit by that point. Yeah. <laughs> I just tell him, run to your puke, and it'll get better and better for you as time goes by. But I'm proud of Bert. And he goes, he, if you put your mind to anything, you can do it. But slower than yeah. most people. All right, there he is, five and a half hours. Five hours, 33, yeah. Good for him. Good, Good for, for Bert. Bert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, they, they challenge him. They sort of making fun of him on Rogan's podcast, saying right. that he couldn't do it. Um but I guess not. I mean, look, if you're going to walk some of the way, you know. No, he doesn't walk at all. He no, ran I, the full I saw tilt. some of the video and he would definitely walk. <laughs> but even walking, he <laughs> even walking 26 miles is not an easy thing to do. There he goes. And look, he's for once wearing a shirt. Wow. <laughs> Ironically. Makes no sense. Yeah. Makes look, no sense. Look at the speed on him here, though. You have to be impressed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bert's just wearing a down jacket. Yeah. <laughs> there is a guy who enjoys life, he by does. the way. Why, yeah. why do they use, like, cl- clicker, clankety sound things? I don't know. People are not. It encourages. Does it make you want to run? <laughs> I live uh, where they run the New York Marathon, and the amount of people that come out, and they're there all day just watching people run yeah yeah and then everyone's just like all right sammy but like they'll read their thing and everybody will cheer they you know be really water. funny yeah instead of handing out water if you pissed in a bottle and gave it to somebody as they ran by and they drank your piss how funny would that be <laughs> guys that's and that's funny. where that this is the guy who's running our festival <laughs> yeah guys skank fest july 14th and 15th I, my mother used to always take me to because we lived right by on fourth avenue and mm-hmm. in brooklyn where it used to come by and she'd always take i think it's just because it's free Right. And we were all broke. It's like a parade. But like I remember even at like eight years old being like, This is really boring. Like, yeah, this it, is it gets not it gets old quick. Watching no. people run by you slowly. Yeah, really, really slowly. And some of them put on funny hats, you know. <laughs> but even like the other day with the um St. Patrick's Day parade, you have a parade of just cops walking down the street being cheered and then the same cops are going to arrest those Irish people for being drunk yeah. five hours later. It's quite maddening. Every once in a while, you get the chance to talk to a champion. And here's a guy. The L.A. Marathon, without training, he pulled it off five hours, 33 minutes, 33 seconds. Bert Kreischer, everybody. Yeah. Bert! Bert! Oh, that's the intro I was waiting for all day. You are a champion, my friend. You proved it. Yeah, I know. I got that Mickey Mail gene, that long strand DNA, <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> just don't get, just don't end up with the Lou Gehrig gene. That's the one you got to work out, worry about. <laughs> I, I feel like I have it today. I can't move at all. Everything sore up. today. Yeah. Oh my god! I feel like I just got. I borrowed legs from a friend, and I haven't yeah. figured out how to use them yet. Um, that's how I was uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the elevator uh, was out, and I had to go up four flights. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up staying oh. home for three days. <laughs> and uh, you did the same time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, just not in a row, though. Bert, Bert, Bert real estate Puerto Rican rattlesnake Louis J. Gomez here. <laughs> Um, did you, did you, we're having a little bit of a dispute here. Did you walk at all during this marathon or did you run the whole time? Oh, I, yeah, I definitely walked. I definitely, I mean, there, I don't think, I really don't think there was any way to do it without walking a little bit. But when I say walk, like, so I got to at mile 11, Jesus Trejo, who I did it with was like, dude, I need to walk for like five minutes. And oh, I fault. got, I got impatient and I was just like, I'm going to keep going. And he was like, okay. So I just kept going and I left him. He's by, by the way, he's like 10 years younger than me, 15 years younger than me. So I keep going. 
and I'm and I'm do, I'm going fine. Now mind you, I'm only going at like a like a 13 minute mile, 12, 12 minute mile is what my pace was. And then I get to mile 20, and that's when they say the wall hits. And bro, I understand why people train for these things. Like, <laughs> <laughs> both calves are seizing up, like seizing up, like like just going up into my leg. Both quads are seizing up, and I start spasming and i watch i'm not even kidding i wish i could say this i watch every one of us everyone around me like the walking dead like a disease we've all been infected by the same disease and it all hit at the exact same time and people start falling off to the side uh-huh. and collapsing and i'm going oh my god this is like i've listened to like so many podcasts with rogan and those ultra marathoners who are like embrace the suck this is the part you love and i was like oh there's no sucking to it my body doesn't work anymore yeah and then I got passed by this old lady who had a mile marker, like a time marker. She's a pace lady with a five hour and 30 minute sign covered in balloons. She just runs right past me. I'm like, oh my God, dude, I got beat. I got beat by a disabled kid. I got beat. I, mean, it, 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 I got beat by four guys in Elvis costumes drinking Miller Lite. I got beat by a woman who no joke shit her pants. She was in front of me. And there was shit all in her pants. And I didn't take a picture of it because I was like, this might happen to me. (laughs) It's very common in a marathon for people just to have explosive diarrhea. They shit themselves in the She had shit all over her pants. And no, I was like, I was like, I was like, man, if I, because I have a chest infection, I had a chest infection for the marathon. And I was like, if I still cough the wrong way, I might shit all over myself. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, you ran a marathon without training with a chest infection? Yep. <laughs> you're, a, you're a different type of human being. Yeah, he is. What's He's the next? A what's the next thing? Where are you going to do like one of those tough mutter, like crazy shit where you run over fire? That's the fucking machine. No, I already did that. I did that. I've done. I've done. Here's the problem. I, I, trust me. I got in the shower the morning of the marathon, and I was like, "What? Why the fuck am I doing this?" Like it started with me joking with Segura and Ari and Joe, who were saying, like, who were like not even joking. They were like, "There's no way you can do a marathon." No. You have to train. And I was like, in my head, I was like, I, I'm pretty certain if you put your mind to something, you can do whatever you want. Like, that's my, I mean, like, if in all honesty, and I think well, all of us will understand this, is like, I decided one day I wanted to be a comedian. What an arrogant thought that is. <laughs> yeah. That I thought, I want to make my living by standing on a stage, and I'll get 1,500 people to pay me 30 bucks each so that I can do, tell them my ideas. So the idea of running a marathon <laughs> is not that far off. <laughs> Huh. You should have heard. You should have heard. The. F- I mean, I wish to God I recorded it. The 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 sound of Tom's voice when when I he called me after I was done, and he was like, "You really ran a fucking marathon?" Like almost like I told him, "Hey, bro, I caught Santa Claus and he's in my garage." Yeah. <laughs> but like it, it, I I'd done all the tough mutter. And I think part of it, I I literally was like doing soul searching during the marathon. And I think I'd done so much shit for travel channel, like jumping out of planes and, you know, fucking fighting a bear and swimming with great white sharks and scuba diving and jumping off stadiums. I think part of me was like nostalgic for something like kind of big. So trust me when I tell you, I've been online all day going like, how hard would it be to do the the iron? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's kind of, it's kind of funny because like, I remember when I quit smoking cigarettes, which was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I I smoked two packs a day for nearly 10 years straight, two packs of candle lights a day. And I had never ran a mile in my life. I had never done a push up really in my life. Like I I was just a fucking fat fuck. And I quit smoking. And then I was like, wait a minute, if I could quit smoking cigarettes, I think I could probably get in shape. And that's when I started doing push ups every day. And I started just adding more push-ups every single day and then i got in really really good shape but it was all from that mental switch where i said wait a minute if i can do this i could probably do anything else but you have the type of personality you could get in crazy shape you could have like a bodybuilder body if you <laughs> wanted to you just have to be motivated <laughs> yeah i remember the day that i stopped taking lewis's phone calls <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I was like if i can do this yeah. <laughs> i could probably make a success out of myself well I'll yeah s- i think i think i think it's uh like trust me when I was trust me when I was crossing the finish line. There was a part of in my head that was like, "Bro, we're doing this again next year, and we're gonna break four hours." <laughs> uh, Bert, we gotta wrap this up, but you're the best, buddy. We're all really proud of you. 
Jesus, that's badass. You, badass. Bert, are, are you in LA next week? You want to do the Legion of Skanks live show? Yes, I do. I definitely am. I Twenty ninth. Come fucking hang, doggy. That's that's fucking oh, awesome, man. Hey, and I, honestly, by the dude, way, best phone call I've gotten all fucking day. Good, I'm glad to hear called, it. So thank you. We're proud well, of you, dude, pal. We're all in awe. I mean, no one here can believe that you actually were sober for an entire month <laughs> in October. That's just incredible, man. I can't believe you're doing stand up. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> Say I love you guys. Thank right, you peace. so much. <laughs> Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith been in the studio. Louis and Dave are co-headlining at Nick's Comedy Stop in Boston this Friday and Saturday. Nick'sComedyStop.com for tickets. Leisure to Skanks and Friends Live is happening Thursday, March 29th at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles with Dan Soder, Joey Diaz, and now Burt Kreischer. Wow, that's the best part of you guys dropping in here, right? Hey, can we, we just make some Kreischer. more calls to good comedians? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's get a hold of Jim Carrey real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Go to ComedyStore.com for tickets. And Skank Fest is happening July 14th and 15th at Brooklyn Bazaar are in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Pre-sale tickets go on sale April 2nd at skankfestnyc.com. Uh, thanks to Bill Hader for uh, stopping in here today. Uh, Barry premieres on HBO this Sunday. Yeah, that's... Uh, I heard that when he left us, he ended up getting a terrible migraine from doing Saturday Night Live. It was really getting oh, to really? him, so we got more... We got uh, about 27 minutes more with him than anyone else did. <laughs> oh, man. All day long. Uh... What was the other guy's names? That was are we playing at this? That's uh, Friday. It's, yeah, that's this Friday at two p.m. Am Divine, Blake Anderson, Anders Holm. Uh, their their interview will be played two p.m. this Friday, right here in Raw Dog. Um, and you'll hear that he finally had a rebuttal to Patrice O'Neill after all these years. <laughs> we finally got his rebuttal. Uh, that's it for us. See you again in nineteen seventy four. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! <laughs> <laughs>